Hello and welcome to Jamie's Wee Podcast. On this episode, I'm buzzing to be talking to my good friend Taylor, who is one of the business gurus behind the Instagram travel account, Love Life Passport. Taylor, what is happening, my man? Thanks for joining me on the podcast. I'm so happy to be here, man. I just want to thank you first and foremost for your support. Uh, obviously, your continued shout outs on Love Life Passport. It's rare to have such a big account uh, do so many shout outs without expecting anything in return, but that's a testament to you as a man. That's, that's us, man. Yeah. If, we, if we like something, we, we share it. Uh, and I believe there's so many people out there in this universe of cult social media. So uh, whether you're a big account, small account, whatever topic you may talk about or your account shows out, I, I truly believe in helping others. Yeah. We were at the beginning at some point. Exactly. We were hoping for shout outs. We were hoping for people to follow us. Yeah. So um, I believe giving, giving back is pretty important. Now, these small gestures, especially, obviously I've got the one done to account, but the Jamie's Wee podcast account is just is so fresh. It's so new. So you know, like these shout outs make a massive, massive difference. And it's, it's, it takes literally two seconds of your time. It takes two minutes out of your day, but it can make a massive difference for someone that likes me or other people who are smaller accounts or trying to grow or just get some exposure. So, aye. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people want something in return yeah. for these kind of shout, shout outs. So you're paying it forward. We don't, we don't expect anything back. Yeah. Like if, if there's any value we can add at any point, uh, whether it is to, to you and Ivana on yeah. Wonder and Two, yeah. or it is, it is your podcast, like at any time you can yeah. count on us. Well, we've spoke about this. It's like you're paying it forward in kind. Like if you do things without expecting in return, it's almost like you're, you're good karma, yeah. you know? And that'll come full circle every single time. Truly believe in karma. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And this is actually a Jamie's Wee, first, uh, Jamie's Wee podcast first, as we stream live on Love Life Passport um, for the first um, 20 to 30 minutes. So hello to all the Love Life Passport followers out there. And I appreciate you doing that, man, again. Excellent exposure. So need it's all like the help we've been, get. Because we've been, we've been pushing content in German all the time. Yeah. So actually, everybody's yeah. really waiting to, <laughs> to, to put some English content out there. So. Yeah. Uh, this is actually uh, just really amazing for our community, yeah. uh, which, which helps them because the topics really, really uh, relate to each and every single person. Um, your values and the values of the podcast and what you are doing really resonates with what we do. Yeah. So it's a win-win situation. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, the small community you have right now serves our community uh, regardless of the number and the other way around, even though our community is bigger, but that is completely regardless yes uh, totally because agree. both if there's only one person being inspired by this we've done a good job we've done a great job that's it all right mission complete now i want to start by uh, setting the record straight once and for all is it pronounced taylor or is it tyler it's um multiple characters so okay. uh you have to probably change the question into uh who am i talking to today okay so and split then, personality yeah exactly i may be choosing into tyler but maybe into taylor right okay it, like really depends depends if you're in business mode exactly yeah. or you're angry or you're hungry it depends it kind of splits splits between the two so it's it's really like everybody just says it like different right, okay. uh, you say it different than all the other people and i say it different than yeah. it's Taylor, Tyler. Okay, so either either works. Whatever. That's fair enough. Fair I'm enough. here. I'm here. <laughs> I will listen. Or T Dog. Elliot calls me T Dog. T Dog. T Dog. I think that's just Elliot, though. The, I think we should leave it to just Elliot. Just leave it to Elliot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, I've been excited for this one. We've spoken about this ever since I started this podcast. I even told you about this idea. You have been buzzing to get on since day one. So I've been very excited to have you on the podcast because you're obviously, you're very clearly an interesting character on Instagram. And you're definitely one of the few people that I would love to hear more about. Um, and I'm sure everyone else out there would love to hear more about. So I'm looking to get a real insight into the man, the myth, the legend that is Taylor or Tyler, <laughs> depending on which day the week it is, um, and Love Life Passport. So why don't we start with life well before Love Life Passport? Um, and with an accent like that, clearly, you're a man of German heritage. Um, so whereabouts in Germany were you born and brought up? I was born in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. um, I lived in Germany for, um, well, quite all my life, basically. Um, grew up in Frankfurt, uh, moved a around a lot because my parents got divorced pretty, pretty early. Actually, I was like one and a half or two. Okay. Um, uh, and 
which is totally cool because today we're a huge patchwork family. I got seven brothers and sisters, so we're eight in total. Wow. And I'm really, really happy and proud to say that we are such a big uh, patchwork family because a lot of people always say patchwork doesn't work. But what is a patchwork family? I've never heard that Basically having, uh, I think it's a German thing you say okay. that. Patchwork basically means uh, that uh, my parents uh, divorced they got new partners and they had already part well these partners had kids already so okay. you want to it's like a whole mixed right okay mixed ev- like it's really really great um so I'm you, just, you grew up with this life so i did i did it's parents it's just normal for from you. from day one for me it's normal to have yeah. uh, to protect brothers to protect sisters to uh to like when we do family gatherings man you have to <laughs> rent a club yeah. it's like it's like it's like really really crazy <laughs> but it, but it's something it's something uh, i really enjoy um, growing up in Germany, which in a very protected neighborhood, uh, which was great, I had a great childhood. Mm-hmm. Everything was really nice, um, great friends. Um, but at some point um, in Germany, you call it gymnasium. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like the, the the how do you call it? Like high school, like the highest. You have to do. You have to first go to, to that school, and then you go to the. Then you can go and study first. Right. So is it like high school? Yeah, exactly. University, but in college. Germany, we have like three state. We basically got three levels. You got the highest one, the middle one, and the lowest one. Yeah. Right. And um, what we what what you want to do is, if you want to really get like to the highest levels and income levels as well, mm-hmm. what you want to do is uh, you always want to get the highest grades and the highest numbers, and then you can only go and study actually. But I never wanted to study. So I repeated classes twice. Oh, really? Yeah. I would never have guessed that, man. I, I, I had to repeat twice. Right. Uh, sixth grade and eighth grade. Uh, and uh, somehow it turned out being, well, still with, uh, with repeating. But it all, all was good. And then at some point I moved to Cologne, started working, um, doing an apprenticeship. Um, because I didn't go and study. My dad wanted me to study. My mom always said, do whatever you love. And um, I started working in a hotel business. Uh, we started working for Marriott, uh, Marriott International. Did my apprenticeship, and um, I was employed for five years. Yeah, for five years until 21. And then at 21, I took a pretty drastic decision. Um, probably something a lot of people did not uh, think I would do. Yeah. But I did it, um, and that was taking the decision to quit everything, quit my job, um, quit my apartment, uh, sell everything I had, and I basically went all the way to Dubai. Okay. And Dubai, Dubai was, a lot of people always say like, oh, was Dubai the plan? Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Like, absolutely not. I sent out 80 applications within the intranet of yeah. Marriott. They, they got like a, their own search engine, basically, where you could search for jobs. And what happened is they, uh, I got 80 rejections. Uh, and that 80. was 80. Like, and I'm not joking, this is not a number I put up. I put 80 applications, like the German way. I wrote everything down and I was following up with everyone. And um, 80 rejections and the 80th application I sent to Dubai. And they basically called me and said, would you mind not taking the position you applied for? Would you take another position? And I immediately agreed. And I signed the contract, I think within a couple of days. And today I know you read contracts before you sign them. Right, you learned the hard way, I'm guessing. It was not easy. No? Yeah, let's say that. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was a crazy time. I'm sure you're time. a big believer and you need, to make them, you need to make these kind of mistakes and then you learn the hard oh. way, you know? It's been, it's been always, like every yeah. single mistake I've done in my life, I don't regret each and every, any one of them. I've been I've I've been really happy for each and every mistake we've done. Okay. Like I've done, we've done in the business. Annika has done, um, it, it, because every single time it, it, even with tough times in relationships, I always I always uh, ask myself, okay, what is what kind of lesson do you learn out of it? How can you improve? Yeah. How can you be better after this? Yeah. And um, that's one of the biggest learning learnings actually in the last years, becoming an entrepreneur, becoming. Um, whatever we have and whatever we created today yeah. is looking into mistakes, what was good and what was bad, taking away the bad and just being better at it next time. Okay. Well, let's rewind a wee bit. This is what I worry about with you because you just get so excited when you talk about business. You just, I could just press the record and just step, I could go for a wee swim in the pool and just let you chat away. <laughs> so I want to rewind and try to find out more about the man behind Love Life Passport. Tell now, me. Your dad. Your dad is German? Yes. And your mum is 
Welsh. She's Welsh. Right. Uh, I, I guess not a lot of people know that. Yeah. No. You know, actually, I, we've never, I've never, never discussed about it. it. No. Now that'll be interesting for some people because no one would have guessed that your your mother was from Wales. So South Wales, Pembrokeshire. 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 Okay. So have you ever been to Pembrokeshire? Ah, oh, multiple hundred times. Oh really? I, I like I, every single um, summer vacation in Germany yeah. is always like six weeks or eight weeks or something. I'm not really sure. And basically, the first years of my life, we always been in Wales. Um, and I was uh, I was. That's the crazy thing about it. Um, I went home not to vacate or to be on vacation, I started working. Right. I was working on a fisher boat. In Wales? In Wales. Really? I was, well, you wanted to get deep, yeah, di- no, deep listen, into no, this it. Is, this is what I want to hear, right? <laughs> we, I, I, yeah, it's, I started working on, on mackerel uh, fishing trips. So um, I was basically, I was just helping the, 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 the tourists. To, what age to, were you at this point? Uh, 10? 10. 10. Oh, well, so you've, you've started. You've 11? You thought that's work ethic from a young I would age. Even, I would even say younger. Even. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. It's around 10 years old. So right. we started doing like unhook the mackerels. And mm. I love fishing. Right. So I love fishing. So um, that was always great. Yeah. I, I always hated going on vacation and chilling on the beach. Yeah. It's not my type of stuff. Uh, you're not a man that just likes to sit and chill. I've never seen you sat, sit still for more than five minutes. In fact, if we can make it through the length of this podcast before you take a business call or something like that, then I'd be very surprised. So uh, I it's, can understand it's, that. It, but it's... Look, the reason why is I don't need a vacation from my life. Yeah. I don't. I genuinely don't. I love what I do from the bottom of my heart. I love inspiring. I love motivating. I love sharing stories from other successful people, inhaling these stories mm-hmm. and learning the message. Yeah. Right? And, and giving one or two insights to people and helping them to develop a better mindset, a better life, um, better quality. That's something which where I think is just way powerful absolutely agree. Right. now you are a man of many talents can you speak uh, any welsh oh no even even like welsh is really like russian yeah. it's n- nothing to do with english mm-hmm. it's like it's like the old heritage i couldn't Celtic. i can tell you one welsh word um there is a word um the town where we are from uh has got like i think 67 letters or something Right, it's, I, I don't know. Place. It's, it, it's really right. crazy. Uh, it's well, if you say it, it's called Dimbicha <laughs> Right. Okay, I'll leave that to you. Yeah. Right. It's called Town of the Little Fishes. Right. So yeah. you, you don't speak any Welsh, no? No. No. Not even one Welsh word. No. Arath in case your mum's listening. Araf means slow. Oh, there you go. That will do. Araf. Yeah. Araf. go. Um, now getting to know you, it sounds like you've always been driven, obviously. Uh, whatever, whatever you turn your hand to, you always put 110 percent into it. Now let's uh, let's start with the time you attempted to be the German Justin Bieber, which I just learned about you. I think it was the other night after a few whiskeys. Um, oh no! And you tried to start a singing career. Talk, talk about that. Man, <laughs> I I should have looked into these questions beforehand. Um, yeah, well. Knowing that my mom is Welsh, yeah. uh, my mom is a singer. She put us on stage from age three. Uh, I think the first stage I hit was, I don't know, three, four, five years old. Uh, that was in front of a couple of thousands of people. And uh, we always sang um, We Are The World together as a family. So my big brother, my, uh, myself, and my mom. Um, and later then my smaller brother as well, uh, Spencer. And um, I, I think age 12, or 11, I'm not really sure. Um, my mom got me a studio recording day for my, br- for my birthday. And we recorded Hero from Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> it's a great song. I can sing something in Spanish, by the way. Just yeah. so you know. uh, you proved it. it. You we'll proved a, it. Oh, did I sing it the other night? You did. Oh, you don't remember? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we had a couple of whiskeys. Nice. Right. Um, it was, it was, and I recorded that, and it went so well that uh, we got in touch with a producer. Uh, we got in touch with a label called Universal. A lot of people today know Universal, yeah. and we recorded uh, uh, an easy play, they call it, an, e play, uh, an EP, a single, five songs, and um, yeah, that's about it. And it's, <laughs> it's on Spotify, I believe. <laughs> if it anyone is, wants to check it out, is it there is, a, where, where, where will they find it on Spotify? It's, it's still on Apple Music, <laughs> Spotify, on all the streaming platforms, um, Taylor Ross. That's my second name. Taylor Ross. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> Next topic, right. I've embarrassed you now. This is not so embarrassing. No. You were also, um, you had a stint as a professional footballer as well in Germany. 
on your trials, is that right? Yeah, yeah, basically, like not professional, professional, but um, I was 15, 16. Um, like, there's one sport I love, and that's football. Same. Um, it's like, I really don't like going to the gym and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I really don't enjoy. Um, but what I really like is, is, is the competitive part of, of football. I don't, pl that's what I always say, I don't play to play, I play to win. Yes. And um, actually this, that's, which comes to my head right now, I was very young when I started football. I played football ongoing from age two or three. I was, I was on the pitch. I was up and running. And um, I always applied this rule of winning and not playing from day one. So even if it was a friendly game, I'd be smashing. I don't care. I think that's I was what there similarities to win. are. Yeah. I was there to win, yeah. regardless of what is happening. And uh, taking losses uh, was a lesson to learn mm -hmm. uh, with that attitude. But um, yeah, I was, I was pretty, playing pretty high up. And, um, but then life came right. across. Okay. Yeah. So it was not like an injury or something? Just no. Just I never had an injury. Never. Right. I never yeah. hurt anything. I never broke anything. I never pulled a couple of muscles, of course, yeah. but never never really had an issue. So just a natural separation from some football. It, other priorities came in. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... It's a very important time in your life when you get to that late teenage and, you know, you're... you're I was... I was look, I was 16 yeah. when I moved away from home. Um, I was 16 and I moved to, um, to Cologne. Uh, Germany and that's where I started my apprenticeship so I wanted to make money yeah um, and you know it like especially in the smaller leagues in football to really make money you really have to get high up and yeah. you have to be more dedicated and you will be one out of tens thousands and hundred thousands of of youth uh, who are who are everybody's striving for the for, for, for Bundesliga or Premier League or whatever yeah. um, but a so, very rare percentage make it yeah so see, even even at a young age you still managed to make this executive decision to give up on something you clearly love a passion because you knew that you had maybe other opportunities by doing this apprenticeship that could lead to where you are now or something similar. So you made that executive decision that even at 16 years old, you had the foresight to, to see what was important at that time. I, re I remember when I, when I, when I left home, um, it was a very, very, um, even though at the age of 16, it was a very senior decision I took. Yes. Um, looking back today, I mean, uh, looking back 10 years now, I'm 27 now, so well, almost 11 years now. Um, Looking back at the age of 16, putting everything aside and starting to work and um, working in a, in, a, in a hotel where you got night shifts, day shifts, um, part-time shifts, whatever. Um, it was probably the most valuable time of my life, yeah. I have to say, because I had so much going on, but I enjoyed it so much at the same time. Um, and, I, and I can proudly say today that the time when I was living in Cologne, the first three years when I was an apprentice and learning, studying basically, that made me an adult. Uh, that time, um, super precious. Excellent, man. So you say you left Germany and you moved to Dubai at a very young age. Um, what, was the, what was the reasoning behind that or the motivation at the time? Actually, it was, it was not motivation, it was not inspiration, it was desperation. Right. Um, probably not like I'm not gonna have a lot of fans with what I'm gonna say right now probably but it's just the truth um, hospitality industry is a very sick business um, uh, I'm not talking about owners I'm yeah. not talking about investors I'm talking about um, employees um, people are working two three four hundred hours a month for minimum wage salary um, uh, back in the days for me it was 1700 euros before taxes so that would be a thousand euros but I was 16 like no, I was 19 then making a thousand euros in a city of students easy yeah you party freaking uh, you love seven, like a king. Yeah. no problem right yeah. you can party seven days a week but you know what I look back today and the same people work at the same hotel with the same salary and I don't want to judge on that but I know they're not happy yeah I know they're, every single morning they go to a shift where they're genuinely not happy. And um, there's a lot of rough st things going on. A lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs. Um, I never did drugs. Um, I always stayed away from it. Um, but it was such an unhealthy period of my life that I had to, we were partying eight times out of seven days a week. Like I was, there was barely a day on a weekend where I was sober at work. Yeah. 
it was just that was just the deal. Was there one particular moment where you maybe woke up and thought, "No, nah, I've had enough of this. I need to do yep. something else." There was there was one very eye-opening moment. That was when um, I was there almost five years, and I was I, I can clearly tell you, uh, and I have the confidence to say that that I was one of the best of what I was doing. Yeah. Um, like the guest was always the high like serving others has been always my passion always helping others regardless of the money they pay regardless who they are regardless of their credit card helping others um, I think genuinely leads to good karma yeah right um, and I developed that at the age of 16 17 18 19 and after almost five years then uh, for working working for for that hotel somebody else got the position I wanted and I was like wait a minute where the hell did you come from mm -hmm. you are there since like a year I'm there since five years what is happening and uh, that was just a punch in my face and I said okay uh, I walked up to HR and resigned the day I heard it I resigned uh, I didn't have any job. Was that Taylor or Tyler? <laughs> that was both at the same <laughs> oh, time fuck you and, you, and, you, and you don't want that to happen <laughs> tell no. me that um, it was it was just very you know, you, you, you're really ripping yourself apart. Mm. I was working uh, 6 a.m. till 3 p.m. After that, I would go to, this, uh, to, the, to, to, um, to a corporation um, hotel, basically, from them, uh, like a sister hotel, let's say that way. And they, um, I would work their late shift. I would go home, to work, uh, go home to bed three, four hours, have a couple of beers, and then go back to work again. I was putting my heart into this, and there's no joke. I was about to tattoo and I'm not joking. I was about to tattoo the, the um, there's a very uh, nice claim from Marriott. It's called Spirit to Serve. And I, w I was about to tattoo this here because we were so intense work. We loved it. We thought there's nothing else than Marriott out there. Yeah. I tell you that I, I really enjoyed it and then somebody comes up and gets my job and I was like fuck you all that was it I'm out right. um, and then started applying quit my job had 30 days of, of how do you call it like a um, like a period where you have to wait oh working your notice yeah, so yeah, yeah notice. exactly yeah. exactly. Uh, 30 days had to wait resigned put 80 applications out and after a month I signed the deal in Dubai why Dubai though was, there a, was, there, was someone there that you knew or was it just bro it was the only like I was going on the internet and I was trying to search positions. Right. And um, I applied everywhere. I applied in China, applied in Russia, I applied oh, in okay. Africa, I applied in uh, in the US, I applied in the Dominican Republic. I I, I think there was no continent where I apply right. where where I didn't apply. So it was just no specific reason for the bias. I wanted I, I had to move. Just throw it. I had to move. Yeah. See, that's one big thing, and I tell you that uh, one big thing a lot of people don't understand. Is like if you want to move out of the current situation where you are not happy in, you need to take drastic decisions. Yeah, and a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, and I tell you the thing, uh, my friends, friends. Yeah. <laughs> everybody said they're gonna visit me. Everybody said, "Oh, we're gonna stay friends." Yeah. Really. None of them. Really. Zero point zero percent. Zero. I'm not friends with like I'm talking close friends. Yeah. A couple of people, of course, now today, they go up and say like, oh, Taylor, he was in my class. Oh, Taylor is my friend or whatever. Um, but it was so bad in the beginning that everybody said they would be there. But they weren't. Nobody. Yeah. Were. Nobody. Unless Annika. Annika was the only person. Excellent. I was just about to talk about Annika next. Um, let's talk about your beautiful wife-to-be. And she has the other blue-eyed face behind uh, the Love Life Passport. Um, so where, where did you guys meet? And was this before you moved to Dubai or after you moved to Dubai? Before. Before. In that hotel. Okay. In so the it does lobby. serve some sort of purpose then. In the <laughs> lobby. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. The yeah. hotel taught me the most amazing lessons. Yeah. Right? It was, I don't want to narrow everything down to the negative moments. Uh -huh. Like, you, you this is positives. one small negative mo moment out of probably one million positive moments. Mm -hmm. Right? That uh, even today, I still have friends who were guests and I was a butler for them, uh, who, were we, who we, I started a business with. Um, so it's really, really crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say that it was all negative. Of course. Um, but I really want to say that a couple, of touch, like a couple of moments really drove me to quit. Yeah. Right? Um, and I met Annika at the hotel. Right. Um, did, you, I, did you speak to her first? Or how did that happen? Uh, well, there's like two different versions, oh, I guess. Is it, um, is it her version and your version? Yep. <laughs> um, Annika 
was, um, how old was she? She must have been just 18. Okay. Just 18. And um, she started, um, she did a dual study. That's what they say in Germany. You can study at the same time in a university, and you can also do an apprenticeship at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's the most intense program you can actually do in Germany because you actually do your bachelor and you at the same time get, do your, do your uh, apprenticeship. Um, usually you do one or the other. She did both and um, we met in the hotel lobby, in the hotel lobby where I worked. Um, I still had long hair. I had long hair back had the in the Justin days. Bieber. The Justin Bieber Spotify, style. iTunes haircut. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I had that one first and um, I think I went up to her. Right. Um, I went up to her. She was new. I just finished my apprenticeship. I was basically full employed for the first time. I had my full employment contract and she started the journey. And um, I saw her and uh, it, I can tell you this, it was not love in the first moment. <laughs> did um, you have to work hard for it, did you? I had to, well, yes, I had to work very hard for it. She was still in a relationship. Oh, really? She okay. was still in a relationship, and I just came out of a relationship which is very toxic and unhealthy yeah. uh, for two and a half years. And um, it, it worked out. It took us a year until we got together. Right. A year. Um, and I'm not talking about like a year of, of, of whatever meeting and stuff. Um, I'm talking about a year of really fighting, like proper charm offensive frock, like going all in, yeah. like inviting her to dinner, going here, doing that cinema. I pulled all strings. I can imagine. I pulled all strings, like every single one. And then uh, at some point, and that's the crazy part about it is, and then we go to the Dubai thing. Uh, we got together on the 4th of July, 2014. Crazy, almost six years. Um, but that's the day when we got together, right? Mm -hmm. I moved to Dubai on the 13th of July. No. So, um, literally nine days after, after, all that. after <laughs> a year of fighting, we get together and then I told her in the same second I told her that I really feel a lot for her. Um, I told her as well, but there's one thing I need to tell you maybe. I'm leaving Germany. Shit. Yeah. And uh, that was the mo I have to really say that, like I have to really like, I'm so grateful for, for what she has done for me. And what it's, I cannot put it in words. So did, did it um, then become a long distance relationship at that I point did. then? I did. And you know what the funny thing is, she was more excited for me leaving because she knew in what kind of bad situation I was that she was more happy that I'm leaving instead of staying and taking her needs back and then uh, she told me years ba years later she told me uh, she thought she's never going to see me again really um, but here we are here we are getting married <laughs> in June so having maybe babies soon you know, maybe oh maybe oh, here we go oh, putting rumors out there exclusives <laughs> I like it keep them coming get the beers open I want more <laughs> So when did um, when did Anna come move to Dubai and how challenging was it for her at the at, at the time? Because obviously it was your decision to go there. I'm assuming she eventually moved there to be with you. Was it an easy transition for her or a difficult transition? Honestly speaking, I can nail it down to the day, to the time, um, when she moved. Okay. I know exactly yeah. what kind of plane. It was 981 days after I left Germany. I know it. Um, but the crazy thing is here. And that's one of the most important and valuable lessons I can give um, people who are in a long distance relationship or are in relationships in general. I'm only 27. Um, this is my first, uh, let's say, real, real, real um, relationship. Uh, and, and I mean, obviously, we're getting married. We're going we're gonna to have a family. Um, and I don't have the crazy experience of years of relationships and everything. But one thing I can tell you, in the last six years, me and Annika went probably through 30 years of relationship. Uh, with all the ups and all the downs, and um, a lot of people only see the ups, but I can tell you there were way more downs than ups. I can tell you that. I think a lot of people can probably relate to that, absolutely. See, long distance relationship, we had to figure this out. A lot of people, a lot of people, if, you've, if you would have a long distance relationship between two cities of 50 miles, right, you could just drive each and every day. Yeah. Um, but even that, people cannot sustain a long distance relationship because their values are totally wrong. So what happened was this, I left and we know, uh, we knew the second I left 
that there is an end date to this. We knew if we fight through this long distance relationship, regardless of what's gonna happen, and I'm saying regardless of what's gonna happen, every shit you can think about, regardless what is gonna happen, we're gonna pull through, and on the 1st of October, 2016, you are gonna be on that plane to Dubai. And we said, she, she, her dream was to fly for Emirates one day. This is two and a half years prior of taking the decision to moving down. What happened? 30th of September, she got on a plane with Emirates coming down uh, to Dubai and she started working for Emirates as a, flight, uh, for, as a stewardess. Manifestation right there, my man. It is insane. And if you, I don't want to go too spiritual with it mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to uh, get dig too deep into it, but you order these things in the universe. Totally agree. And um, you attract these things. If you are willing to change, if you are willing to adapt, if you are willing to learn and to grow, the um, universe will come up with crazy things. And um, it rewarded our relationship. And um, it rewarded our relationship in multiple hundred ways. Yeah, I can imagine. And I tell you this, long distance relationship. I mean, you, you are in a, I don't want to say similar situation, but uh, we're in Bali right now. Yeah. Ivana is in, in, in Australia right now. Um, uh, like, whatever situation happens because of all the, all the hectic stuff going on in the world, um, like, you are separated for a couple of, like, if I'm separated from Annika for a day, I'm screwed. Yeah. Uh, because we're, we, we, we spend every single day, business-wise and private-wise, together. So I believe one big thing here is you always know what you're doing, like who you're doing, like what's your goal? Where are you going? What's your goal? What do you want to do? You know what I mean? So that's, that's one of the most important things. Okay. And are you still based in Dubai now? Yes. We always operate from Dubai. We have our companies in Dubai. Um, very, um, very honest reason why. The number one thing is security. Mm -hmm. I have never felt safer than in Dubai. Have you got a re residency in Dubai, yes. I believe? Yes, yeah. yes, since six years already. Mm -hmm. uh, residency, we got our companies there, everything is set up. We live on Blue Water Island, which is great, uh, which um, gives us the chance of really calming down, um, though our life is very hectic. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Now, you're known for being very open, honest, and transparent when it comes to business and making money. So what did you do to earn money before Love Life Passport? I had 15 jobs. 15 jobs. Like, hustled, hustled hard. I just, I just hustled hard. Yeah. Um, you know what? As I said, I was 10, and I started already yeah, yeah. working on a fisher boat for yeah. a couple of quid. Yeah. Just for a couple of quid. Yeah. I, was, I was just, I knew, I wanted more than everybody else, so I had to do more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Very logic thinking. So if I wanted to buy the newest skateboard, I knew I had to work for it. My parents never gave me free shit. They never, uh, and that's not judging. Yeah. Uh, that's like respecting. Of course, yeah. Because, because I'm really happy that they didn't give me that. Yeah. If my dad, like my dad would come up to me and be like, oh, um, if you wanna have this bicycle, I'm gonna give you half of the money, the other half, you have to earn it. Yeah. Boom. And I was like, okay, let Important me earn it. values and lessons to learn yeah. at a young age especially. Exactly. And before, before Love Life Passport came in place and before Love Life Passport became, and I can proudly say, a million dollar brand today, um, I, was, I was working in the hostel. Uh, like, look, it's, if, you go, if, if you go with the time, I was, I was living the life in Germany as a student. Everything was great. Partying 24-7. Super unhealthy, but it was great. Moving to, to Dubai in a city which is quadruple expensive, but making only $500 a month. That was my biggest challenge. Yeah. And I went back 15 steps. And then the first 18 month, in the first 18 month or two years roughly, I built up 30,000 euros of debt in debt, Dubai. So you were yeah. in debt, yeah. yeah. Um, I, Man, it, so you, had it, a you basically had a fire under your ass. So you had to, you had to make. Man, I did, I did. You had no option. I did stupid shit. Yeah. Um, I really did stupid shit. Like, I had a one big paycheck coming in. What did I do? I bought a freaking Porsche. Yeah. At the age of twenty-two. That's sweet. You do it twenty-two, and you get a, a bit of money. You know, it's. It was. It was just. It was probably the, the, the. If you would ask me about the most stupid decision I've ever took in life, then buying a car. Yeah. 
Um, and I love cars. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows that one day I'm going to definitely drive one of my most wanted cars and, and I will drive that. Yeah. Um, that will happen. Which, and I, which is? Uh, I, I would love to have a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would love to have a Lamborghini. Uh, various reasons why. Yeah, yeah. I just like the car. Okay. I just really <laughs> like it. Um, it could be an R8 as well. It's the same car, basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, just different uh, uh, from the outside. But you know what? The reason the reason why I'm saying this is um, a lot of people rather want to flex with cars, shoes, watches, brands. I love brands. I mean, I can I cannot speak myself from brands because you see me with brands. That yeah. is no problem. But I do it today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I can afford it today. Not back in the days. And back in the days, I had to learn it the hard way. I bought this car and I wrecked it within a year. Yeah. But I still had to pay it, of course. Yeah. Right? Um, so that let me with debts. Um, I, started, I started, to, started to work. I had my job in the hos hospitality industry. I accepted the situation that I didn't make any money. Um, and I was living on nine square meters in the desert with three people. Sharing eight showers and six toilets uh, with 170 people from 46 different nationalities. And I can give you this, a lot of nationalities on this planet have a different understanding of hygienic standards. Um, without being, giving any details, but, well, to give you details, if people shit in your shower, uh, you know, sh it's not cool. That's what happened. Every day. Every day. But, but that's normal to them. Well, that's like a that, learning curve. Like, that's, like, that's normal. I mean, yeah. think, and not talking about other situations, but you have, 170 men who are separated from their family for at least two years because that's the period of their contract. Most of them are there for like four, five, six, seven, ten years. They make the money, send it all back to their family so their kids can, can, can go to universities, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give you details on this, yeah. but if you have 170 people making the minimum, like below minimum wage, what happens? And that's very rough. So that was, that was the toughest time of my life. Yeah. I, I wanted to quit a million times. Yeah. Interesting, man. Never knew that about you. Never knew that it about was, you. When I, moved, when I moved to Dubai, they, uh, they, sent me this, they sent me a PDF with the accommodation. And um, they sold it to me pretty well. Yeah. At the end, it was a huge okay. So I always read the fine print. Today, I know that. <laughs> um, but that led to yeah. everything else. Yeah. So you I made you made a lot of you lot made a lot of mistakes in your earlier life, which basically put you in the path to put you in the path to success, basically because you, you learned a lot of valuable lessons. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Every, now, every every lesson, regardless how hard it is, yeah. um, taught me. It put me ahead of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I fell in love with the process. I fell in love with understanding why things happen. Mm -hmm. Why do things come together? And understanding that process helped me to develop a mindset bulletproof yeah. interesting now have you well, obviously you, you've always had a passion for business and making money does that come from your dad because i understand this, he's a businessman himself <laughs> yeah. is that right uh w with all respect to my mom it didn't come from my mom right okay for sure not yeah. um it's uh probably from my dad yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom um taught me a lot of a lot of things outside of business yeah being a human Manners, yes. Um, the important respect, skills. the very important skills in life. That's what my mom taught me. Yeah. My mom is is uh, the biggest blessing in my life because the great thing about it is that she taught me to just be pure human. Yes. Straight up, no BS. Just be human, right? Respect people. Um, treat people as you wanted to be treated. And without these skills, you would never be successful in business. Zero. Yeah. Zero. And then combined with my dad helping me to develop an entrepreneur mindset um, though he is actually an employee it's He's very employee. yeah uh, he was an employee for for a very big german bank for 27 years 28 years straight um, until he retired and um, but he that's the great thing if you would have taken away if you would have quit my, uh, my my dad's job in that time in that period he built multiple income streams around himself. So talking about real estate, talking about uh, multiple restaurants, talking about various occasions. Yep. And now he's an employee. 
as an employee. I hope you give them a uh, good holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hope you give them some time off. Well, today, today, I don't like. I mean, we we partnered up in a couple yeah. of a uh, couple of projects um, together with my dad, and uh, which is really really great, and also with my mom. Yeah. So um, I always tend to build businesses with people I trust 100. percent Just more than family. Exactly. Yeah. Like. Um, and very close friends, course, like very, very, very close friends. But that is very rare. Well, I look forward to our business partnership one day, whatever that may be. Maybe we'll we should get into the, bit of the, the beer business. The beer business? Uh, or a whiskey oh. business, whiskey brand. Whiskey yeah. brand, yeah, maybe well. Like, maybe, um, love life, wonder Jamie. and two passport, you know. <laughs> love life, wonder and wee passport, you know, yes, something exactly. like that. You know? Yeah, exactly. It just rolls off the tongue. We'll, we'll start, so we'll discuss that later off camera, uh, okay. just so no one steals their ideas, <laughs> you know. Now, I think that's just discussed that part of it. Before now, it's time to get in a love life passport it, itself. So why don't? Is it now time for a beer? Have we worked hard enough for it yet? Have we Have we worked hard for a beer? I think we've. I mean, we're forty. We're forty minutes into this already. Can you believe it? <sighs> All right, let's, let's have a bintang. Right, bintang let's, open, let's son. A, let's have a good old bintang. I thought we would never get these open. They've been sitting staring at me this whole time, <laughs> and it's it's a hot day here in Bali. Uh, and this fan's not quite cutting it, so these things have been uh, looking delicious all this time. Are we still live on Instagram? We are, and we're just going to keep rolling, keep right? It going? Is it okay keep rolling, guys? I think they're saying yes. I think uh, the, the, the two people are still tuned in are probably saying yes. <laughs> Cheers, man. Is Cheers, bro. Prost. Prost. And uh, Welsh, you say yachida. 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 There we go. That's the first ever Welsh word that I've said in my life, so cheers, my man. Cheers. Mm. So as I say, let's talk about Love Like Passport. Yep. When... And why did you guys decide to create the Instagram account? Coincidence. Coincidence. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Coincidence, why? Because it was what Love Life Passport became today was never the plan. Yeah. It completely went off plan. Okay. So what was the, <laughs> what was the plan in day one? Because we'll, we'll get into that. I've got, I've got a few questions on Love Life Passport. That's so good. That's good. What was so, the plan? So I, I can tell you straight up. Um, in 2017, um, I started a business in 2016. Beginning of 2016, I be, uh, started building a network marketing business, um, which until today uh, pays us uh, pays us very good money. And um, I've got a team of 7,000 people in more than 60 countries, um, and uh, making multiple seven figures um, in revenue a year um, for a very big U.S. brand. And that led me to the point that I was able to quit my job and pay my debts within 14 months. That was, that was uh, my biggest and highest goal was to get out of debt. And um, that was number one. And number two, quit my job. Took me 14 months. That was March 2017. Yeah. And um, the biggest issue was Annika. Right. I was in business and I was loving business and she knows this. But she was an employee and she had the employee mindset. So if I would tell her that I have to invest money into things uh, to build up my business, she would be like, hey, why don't we just use that money to do something else? Which I, from, from an employee standpoint, totally understandable, but from, an, uh, from, from, from a business owner perspective, totally irrelevant. Yes. Because the four, like if you start a business, the first four or five years are probably even more, um, just don't even think about personal life. Like don't even think about personal life. Um, don't think about uh, the good nights out. Don't think about the birthdays and the Christmases and whatever. That's what I tell um, all people worldwide. Um, on any stage I've been talking, if you start your business, you either you, like you will see winners and losers in business, but you will see them from day one. You will see who will win and you will see who will lose from day one. And um, I said I have to treat my business as if it was about to crash and every single day. And the thing was, it affected our relationship so bad that we had to take the decision of, are we either gonna work together yes. on this, or are you doing your thing and I'm doing my thing? Like, what's the, again, what's the end goal? Where do we wanna go? And I told Annika, I was like, look baby, um, if we don't fix this, our relationship is gonna break. And um, I went up to her and I said, look baby, um, I have to tell you something. Can you accept to be number two for the next three, four years? And um, because I was investing all my money into my business, right? And um, she was like, yeah, let's do it. And um, she accepted it um, because I explained to her where I want to go. I want to serve my family, you know? I want to I make sure that um, 
in a couple of years time I decide where my kids grow up yeah. and not governments decide where they wh to which school they go whatever that's the worst thing for me to happen that I'm regulated by someone only because I'm not I don't have the assets for it you know mm -hmm. and so Love Life Passport was just, just like a collaboration between you and, and what happened then was exactly this yeah. we had to find a platform which resonates from both sides yes it's like a where, common ground where she can put something in and I can put something in and I was we were we were desperate to find something and we were in New Zealand we were in uh, Auckland we were in Auckland and um, Ivan I'll be pleased to hear that yeah. shout out to Auckland <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were in Auckland and like we had a the, the probably uh, yeah we had a how do you say that um, jet lag of like mm -hmm. the craziest jet lag 3 a.m. in the morning, lying in bed, watching YouTube videos, and I saw a couple, a German couple. Uh, we saw daily vlogs from them, and we saw them, and I started Googling how much money they make. And it said a ridiculous number, something like two, three million dollars a year. Yeah. And I was like, I was like what? <laughs> With videos on YouTube? Yeah. I'm like, what the heck is this? And then we said, okay, let's do it. Let's just do the same. We bought a GoPro and just went off just went off and started our YouTube channel. It failed drastically. <laughs> it failed drastically. And then in uh, December, sorry, in January 2018, we started our Instagram page. I never had Instagram before. I hated Instagram. Um, I loved Facebook until they changed all the metrics and everything. And then we jumped onto uh, Instagram and uh, it worked out pretty well today. Yeah. Now, people might not know this, but um, what makes your account unique is that it's not just you and Annika that's behind Love Life Passport now. Um, you also have, is it three other official members of the Love Life Passport team? Eight. Eight, I'm fucking right, okay. Change my notes, eight. Um, so wh what, who are the other people? Um, and what, what kind of roles do they play within the Love Life Passport? Because most of, you, most of the people I'm sure who'll see you, they'll just think, it's just you guys, or just that, maybe another, just another travel couple. But you guys are a bit more unique in terms of, it. it's, a, it's a whole team behind yep. the Love Life Passport. Yep. Um, you have 24 hours. Yes. I have 24 hours. Regardless of age, regardless of look, regardless of mm -hmm. origin, regardless, like, yes. regardless. And you can only work to a certain extent. And same for me, right? Um, I'm not a machine. Uh, I have 24 hours like everybody else. I probably sleep even more than everybody else because I'm very strict on my eight to 10 hours of sleep. Um, the thing is, from day one, we knew that we want to create something unique out of Love Life Passport, and we knew that either we're gonna, either we're gonna learn the skills of, let's say, photography. The first, the first employee, as you want to say, um, was Elliot, and we decided to um, get him on board after meeting him um, because we decided, hey, should we either learn videography and photography, and editing, and Photoshop, and all these things? Or should we get someone on board who's interested in actually growing a brand? And universe, we were drunk on my birthday in January 2017 in a bar in the Philippines in El Nido, in the Happiness Bar. Mm -hmm. Highly recommendable, by the way, okay. for everyone. Good to know. Very, very, yep. very, very, very great. And he came up to us. We had a Canon 80D on a gorilla pod and we were running around. And he was like, are you guys YouTubers? And I was like, yeah, sure. We're, we got a huge account, millions of followers, and we got two subscribers. And, um, and he's like, oh, cool. Um, what do you guys do? And we're like, oh, we're just traveling, our first vacation here in the Philippines. And um, he decided to come to Dubai and shoot us two, three months later. And I made him an offer. And I said, look, Elliot, and you guys can ask him um, at Life with Elliot if you want to check him out. Yeah. And um, I said, look, bro, here's the thing. We need someone to do what we can do. Pictures and editing. I can either spend time on it or I can spend time building my business, but I really need someone on board. Uh, would you partner up with us? And he said, sure, why not? I was like, look, there's only one thing I have to tell you. This is not paid because we don't have money to pay you. But if you decide to stick to us, I'm gonna make sure you're gonna fly the entire world. And I'm gonna pay it for every single flight Every SIM card, every nasi goreng you're gonna have, mm -hmm. every pot thai you're gonna have, every beer I'm gonna b pay for your toothbrush for everything. Can I get a job? <laughs> and and uh, and he bought into that. Yeah. And uh, I said I said I told him I was like the first person I'm gonna pay in the company before I'm paying myself is gonna be you because you bought you bought into the idea. 
And that's what we did. After, I think, 12 months or something, uh, he was on a paycheck. Yeah. And we were able to actually really pay him um, the money he w he's absolutely worth and um, getting him on board and more and more and more. And then eventually, what happened is that two, another thing is that we, we're online, right? Everything is online and we decided to, how can we actually get the chance of spreading the word of Love Life Passport faster instead of organic reach? And we had to find someone who was good in marketing, who's good in traffic and conversion, who can read analytics. And uh, we got a marketing guy on board, and uh, which was a very close friend of mine, a very successful guy. And I hope that he would buy into the idea of such a small project because he only joins businesses yeah. far beyond nine figures. Uh, like talking billion dollar companies um, and he liked us and the idea um, and he bought into that as well and we partnered up basically in the company and around that brand now we have of course we got a video team we got a photographer team we have um, an analytics team we have um, basically more or less a PA for Annika uh, for all her stuff she does uh, but it's not a typical PA thing it's it's like really anything Right, she helps with so many things, um, and we are we are eight people now, at the moment. So did you? I mean, obviously you had to fund a large part of this with your own money at that point. It's not yeah, a lot. Everything I mean, from yeah, our own pocket. Yeah, everything. A lot of people, especially the people watching, won't be able to afford basically to keep themselves other rather than you know. But but see, that's that's always an argument. Yes. People always say like, oh yeah, but you had the money. Wait a minute. Yeah. First of all, I worked hard to get the money I had, number one. Number two is, let's be honest, to find someone who edits your videos, go on fiverr.com, it costs you $35, $35. Um, to get someone who, who does a couple of pictures of you is not expensive at all. The thing is, we started, our first year, we started only working with Elliot in 10 in 2018 that's when we started yeah the first year was the camera and the tripod you know what the really embarrassing thing is that we only found out after we knew Elliot like when he started working with us we knew that our uh, Canon ADD had a uh, had a timer <laughs> we only found we only found that out after a year yeah, of working after, with yeah. the camera because we were always with the phone yeah. running around and taking like pictures and posing and doing like click, <laughs> the phone click, in the pocket. click, <laughs> click <laughs> and having the phone in the pocket it was it was, you know, we put the effort yeah, and the work in, yeah. right? And a lot of people come up and say, yeah, but I don't have the money to fund that. Well, then create money. And you don't necessarily need money. I, you, I think you touched on this at the start when you got Elliot on board. There was no money. There was no transactions involved at that point. This is one thing you actually taught me. Outsourcing, outsource, outsource. Outsource the things that take up the most of your time. And not only that, outsource the things you don't like. Exactly. So we've, we've started doing that. We've, we've for, an, for example, Pinterest takes a lot of time. A lot of time we've got a strategy we know how to do it well I say we if Anna knows how to do it yeah and we advertised on our Instagram for someone to come and join come and join the wandering two team it's no we don't want an employee we want someone to work with us yeah, be part yeah, of yeah, what yeah, we yeah, do yeah, yeah. join our story and it was purely it, there was no money involved it's just you know come in and do it for six months we'll, te we'll teach you our strategy um, and as we grow... By the way, this is a great tip. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting, but Sorry. this is a great tip for everybody out there how to build a business without money. Yeah. What we did with Elliot was very simple. I know how to build a business. That's, that's what I love. That's what I breathe. That's what I eat. That's what I am. He doesn't. So he said, I need someone to help me. How can I actually make money online? And I was like, well, I know how to do that. It's an exchange of skills, not So money. it's an exchange of skills. Yeah. I was buying into his idea and he I was never. buying into my idea, yeah. right? And then we were joint venturing basically all our networks. So for everybody out there listening right now, think about this. If you wanna build a business online, find people with common interests, exchange services, um, make sure that you add value to the other's person yeah. and it will eventually end that skills will be exchanged and people will come on board. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Absolutely. That will agree. happen. Yeah, absolutely agree. Because what one of the things we say, the girl who does it for us is Jen. She actually is in Perth um, right now. She does Pinterest for you? She does Pinterest for us. So we actually, had like, I think it was like 10 applicants. And now that we couldn't believe, because we advertise that we want somebody to do our Pinterest full time. We can't pay you. Um, we'll teach you the way we do it. Uh, you'll join the Wanderer 2 team. 
all that kind of stuff, but no money will be involved. Think and about this great 10 thing. applications, man. Think about this great thing. You got somebody on board doing the, uh, doing the Pinterest part. Yeah. You guys have a blog with multiple 10,000s of people entering that blog yeah. every single month. Yeah. That is a valuable lesson you can teach people. Exactly. You can take a lot of money for that. Yeah. So instead of taking money for that, you will have an exchange of service. That's it's a collaboration, yeah. right? And that's exactly yeah. what you want to do, and that's what we do. And we also told it as well. It's like, you know what? By the way, we're doing in, exactly the same right now with Pinterest as well. We've got go. Dominic on board right now. Yeah. Uh, he's working on it. He's actually waiting for a message from me since five days. Um, <laughs> Better message on back. Yeah, I have yeah. to. <laughs> um, so that's it. I mean, we, um, but also, another skill is when we spoke to her, we were very open and honest about where we are in the world right now in terms of our situation. And we told her, listen, as and when we grow, we will reward you for being with us. Yep. If you're honest with us and you get on board now and you give us your time, your skills, you buy into what we do, you don't do it for any money right now. If, if and as and when we grow, you'll be rewarded for being with us and sticking with us and believing in us. Well so, done. Yeah, very, very good. And you know, and the great thing about this is that you don't even need contracts for that. No. You don't even need contracts because no. that's a human. Mm -hmm. That's human. Yeah. You know what I mean? Human. Being human, being kind and helping each other's um, to just be a better version of ourselves. As your mum taught you. As your 100%, mom taught man. You. Like, and that shows me that your parents yeah. uh, probably brought you up in a very similar way. We've had a very similar upbringing. Without the singing. No, there was singing. <laughs> Maybe a wee bit better than yours. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, we've had a very, very similar upbringing. The more you talk about it, it's, it's actually quite eerie to hear the similarities in our stories. So. Love it. Um, now, you decide to do the majority of your stories and what you do in German, even though you and Annika both speak perfect English. Yes. Is there a reason you only target the German audience? I know there'll be a thought process behind that, so what is that thought process? Yes, there is a very, very, very uh, important process behind this. Um, so the whole idea was, in the beginning when we started, we were talking English. That's yeah. what a lot of people don't actually know. We, we were talking English before uh, we were talking German. So what we did is um, we started talking English and the audiences on, um, on Instagram showed us that, yes, we have to speak English because, I don't know, 75% of your audience speaks English. And um, we did that and we got our marketing team on board. So we got Ralph and Jane on board and um, they basically asked us, um, why are you guys speaking English on your on your on your channel? Yeah, and I was like, well, look into the uh, look into the statistics. Everything is English, so why wouldn't we? <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, maybe you want to try talking German for a second. And um, what happened is we started talking German, and our audience just blew up. Really? We had less German followers, but then it blew up out of one simple reason. Germans like to buy from Germans. Like, not in terms of buying and putting money in, but Germans would like to listen to Germans. Yeah. They're very, uh, very... Um, clicky. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to yeah, call clicky. it. Very, yeah. very, very tricky, clicky, whatever you want to call clicky, it clicky, yeah. uh, on that. But it was a great lesson. Mm -hmm. And we looked into the market and uh, decided that there is actually almost no competition. There's no one else doing that. There's no one else doing what we're doing in the German market. So that's the reason why we said we're going to continuously stay German with English subtitles. Mm -hmm. So you feel that works a lot better then? 100%. Uh, we haven't even tapped the English market with our products. You think there'll be a natural progression there into the English market? Or do you think there's just going to be always be that kind of dual speaking in your German, your native tongue, and then just translations for the English? So what, we, what we're going to do, we, uh, the brand will definitely stay German, yeah. but the brand will... 100% move into the English markets okay. uh, and we're going to target each and every single person who's interested in um, making money online yeah. and building actually a business online. Right, okay. We will 100% every single English person. Good to know, man. And we will find them. I was always a very intrigued. I don't think I've actually asked you that with the German thing before. So I was, because there is some stories I watch and then it's like I don't understand what you're saying and there won't be subtitles. So it's like that's the reason when we, do, when we don't do subtitles, there's a reason why. Right. I don't want to confuse people then. Okay. Because the reason not doing subtitles sometimes is maybe we're... Um, You're directing... You we're directing to a page yeah. or to a product which would confuse more people okay. um, instead of actually getting the swipes from the Germans then. You know right, that I mean? makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Good to know. That's the reason. 
Now, you're very vocal about the money that you guys make through Instagram, which is why I feel comfortable asking you. Mm -hmm. um, on average, how much would you say you make per month or per year or whatever? Um, where do those revenue streams come from? There's a, there's a really, really great quote out there. Um, an average millionaire has seven sources of income. You never put your eggs in one basket. Yeah. You never. Yeah. So you've got multiple revenue streams then. 100%. Um, it is, I mean, it's a very specific question, <laughs> uh, which I can actually, to be really honest, uh, not answer at the full uh, mm -hmm. because I just simply don't know it. You don't know? Um, I, I, well, I, cannot, I can give you an estimation of uh -huh. it uh, roughly, but I cannot give you down to the cent, right? Yeah, of course. But what I can tell you this is, is this. Um, with, with, um, with the business I built at the first, uh, with my network marketing business, um, we, mailed, we made more than multiple, multiple, multiple um, six figures, almost seven figures with it, um, which led us to, to, the, to the very comfort situation that we were able to invest, yeah. right? Which is great. Um, but then it was super important for us to build something outside of this outside of my original business. And um, talking about Love Life Passport, uh, it's only two years since the brand has been founded, a little bit more, two and a half years. And um, in the second year, 2019, we made more than a million dollars, um, keeping 90% of profit. Um, and that is super, 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 super efficient. Um, where do, how do we make that money? We show other people how to really escape the nine to five. Yeah. That's our biggest mission. Yeah. Um, look, I see one big thing. 2020 is one of the most precious years and decades we're entering in. And if you live right now and you are healthy right now, there is no excuses anymore. There is no excuses anymore. Um, look what's happening in the world right now. Everybody's fighting this and we don't want to talk about Corona, but I just want to say that all the big companies right now are sending home their people. Everybody's on home work. Everybody's on home office. The world will now understand how powerful it is to send an employee in a much nicer environment instead of having that person come to the office all the time. Mm -hmm. Our credo in our company is always one thing. Nobody has a fixed schedule and none of our employees has a fixed schedule as long the job is done. I don't care if you are in Zanzibar. I don't care if you are in Bali. I don't care if you're in the US. I don't care if you're partying. Yeah. You can party seven days of the week. As long as you get the work done. As long as you get the work done. You still get the same money. If you yeah. only work a day a month, you still get the same money from me. Doesn't matter. I want the job to be done. Done properly. Yeah. And done properly. Mon and see, and that's, that's a different thing. And that's the reason why we are successful with what we're doing because um, we attract complete different people yeah. with a different mindset. So um, we have um, my former business, we have, um, we have uh, Love Life Passport, we have just uh, founded um, a bikini brand, which is actually more or less 99.9% .9 Annika. Um, I just support where I can. She built that brand from scratch. Um, we're launching on the 5th of April. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're super excited and let's see where it goes. Um, we're really excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's one more income stream and then multiple others as well, yeah. which lead to, 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 of course, regardless what you want, because that's probably what, where you want to go to with this question is mm -hmm. to, to, of course, a seven figure income a year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but that's the, you know, here's the issue. A lot of people will be like now, oh, great. He makes a million a year. I'm like, I'm not really interested in that. I re I'm, I'm really not interested in it. I'm, I, I swear to God, I'm not. I'm interested in how, yeah. when, where, what, what, like how did it work? The process. The process is what you need to love. If you don't fall in love with the process, there is no way of any success. Do you think um, because you're so open and honest and discuss how much money you earn freely that opens you up to doubters or people having negative thoughts towards you or jealousy towards you? Shall I tell you why? Because most people have a not understandable and wrong and unhealthy 
attitude towards money. Yeah. That's the reason why. Mm -hmm. Because so you um, think that as people out there who may watch you and just thousands. You think so? Yeah, thousands of people. Thousands of people, and you they know what? Doubt you. And, and it's great that yeah. they're there. Does that bother you at all? Uh, no. No. Not Zero. one bit. Well, now and then, if you get a message and you you talk about it and yeah. you're like, who are you? Do you find yourself getting like, messages on Instagram? People maybe daily, really daily, 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 daily. Um, because we, we're just, I, I'm just, Anika is a little bit more protective. Yeah. I just say what I think. Yeah. Um, if if I wouldn't like you, I would tell you right now. Yeah. I'd be like, fuck off. Like I, I tell you straight up. Don't, I don't want to like get out of my life. Yeah. But if I like people, I cheer them as much as I can, as much as I can with everything I have, um, supporting people, um, regardless of money, right? But money, of course, as well. Um, sponsoring things, helping things, whatever. But you know what? Doubters and haters need to be earned. Yeah. You can only get doubters and haters if, if you're, you're doing, doing something, something right. right. Yeah, of course. So only feel, possible. Do you feel the bigger that you get? It shows us. And the more that you grow. Of course. Yeah. But if you talk to any influencer out there, if yeah. you talk to any successful person in business, they will have this. Yeah. People are doubters. Look, especially Germans. Germans, from the nature, are doubters. Yeah. They, 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 but that's okay. I, I don't want to doubt them for being doubters. Yeah. But I just want to tell you um, that I don't think that that is the right attitude towards life. Of course. Because in Germany, if I'd be driving a Porsche or a Lamborghini, whatever luxury car you want to name, people would be like, oh, daddy paid. Or, oh, he's doing drugs, or he's doing this, or whatever, right? In Dubai, bro, if you drive a Lamborghini, people come up to you and be like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. How? What do I need to do? Tell me now. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Different mindset. That's a whole different world. Yeah. Whole different world. Whole different world. But having doubters and haters shows you you're on the right track. Does it, does it ever get to you at all? Has there ever been one particular moment where someone said something to you and it's really... When it gets personal, yeah. when it gets personal, I would, I, would, I would probably like to send someone to their doorstep. Yeah. Yeah. Has it ever got really personal with anyone? Or no, oh, it really? gets personal all the time. Yeah. Uh, it gets personal all the time. When it, gets, like, when it goes against Annika or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really get pissed off. Yeah. Um, and I really, I, I, I really have to calm myself down. Annika is way better than this. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really bad at it, but um, look, social media is great, but social media is really bad yeah. at the same time uh, because people tend to be behind a profile. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're protected. Pr protected by yeah. the anonymous internet. Yeah. They so, can, yeah. They I'm, can basically drop a nuke on your life and just untraceable. Basically, they're untraceable. Yeah, it's a big problem, man, online. And, and I know because you are someone who's so vocal about things like money, about business, about success, these are things that make, put a target on your back. You will be susceptible more than most yeah. uh, but for that's, doubters and, but for and, us, and that's negativity. Fine. But yeah. for us, that's fine. Because you know what? I want to talk about these things where a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah, of course. Because, look, a lot of people don't talk about money. Either they don't have it, either they don't know it, or multiple other reasons. Yeah. But the truth is that, of course, those, that's what a lot of people always say, those who have money, they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. Because our mission is to help others to do the same. Mm -hmm. I, 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 my, I swear to God, my number one mission is to help other people quit their job, travel the world, and experience what this world has to give. I, can, I mean, I can vouch for you on that because you've helped us enormously, especially when Ivana and I launched our online course. You gave us a lot of information. In fact, I think it was you. In fact, I will credit you. You were the one that says, well, why don't you release an online course? And again, we had the doubts. Of I, I know where, when and where I sent that yeah, message. Yeah. I can remember because it was like... I was in Barcelona at the airport and I was sending you a voice message. Yeah, there you go. Six minutes and 54 seconds. And then we... Because at that point, we, we're not the biggest blog in the world. But as you say, it's like our rung in the ladder... People don't always want to know how to get to the end goal. They want to get to the next step on the ladder. And we had just bridged one step in the ladder. Yep. We went from a small amount to a good amount. And, and that's, that's already the yeah, case. Exactly. And that's already the deal. And some people just want to know how to get to that stage so they can then go from there. Exactly. So you made us see that we had a value there, even though you think, well, we've not got a massive blog, you know, we're not. But we had a short period of success very quickly in our blog. By doing something, 
um, and by learning these skills. And you said, well, just document that process and sell it to people. People will be interested in knowing from get how, how you went from A to B, not A to Z. And here we go. You just said the most important thing. Yeah. And that's probably for this podcast as well, one of the most important things you can just put up there. Document in the process. Yeah. Document in the process changed our life from zero to hero. Yeah. Um, like to a, to, to a life with purpose, with mission, and with drive. Yeah. Because honestly speaking, you documented the process and taking someone from zero to one is easier from zero to 100. And that's what you're doing right now. So a lot of influencers and people out there undervalue themselves because they only have 10,000 followers. Wait a minute, you have 10,000 followers. Can you please write an ebook and create a course and tell other people how you created that? Yeah. That's valuable. Yeah. You got a, let's say you got a hotel collaboration, you got 267 followers. Okay, you got a collaboration with a hotel. Tell other people how to get collaborations. I have a friend of mine. Um, he, he wrote 20 email templates. How to um, approach big um, five-star brands, right? Though with a small following. Bro, he made it $1.3 million on this. On these templates. $9 a template. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There we are. Yeah, he yeah. just started to... Freaking pull you just it seen out. his value, you just and, he, and, he, and he saw the value. Yeah. Anything you do, let's start off with something very easy: morning routines. Yeah. Most people wake up in the morning, put on their phone, get the bad news, and day is already over. Because your mind is basically so congested, it's polluted with negativity. And, oh yeah. my God! With all the politics and the Coronas and the Heinekens and the Salzolitos of the days, whatever. Yeah. Um, but the crazy thing about it is, how to create a morning routine. That's something you can read in every single book, in every podcast, in every video out there. You can go out there and create an ebook just in a blink of a second. Yeah. Done. There is a target audience for absolutely every single thing in this plan. I can tell you, I yeah. know people, they have target audiences um, talking about fetishes yeah. and crazy things. That, people wearing horse masks, <laughs> these kind of situations. They make millions and billions and trillions of dollars yeah. just by understanding the need of something yeah. and targeting the right audience. Yeah, fascinating man. So obviously... And think about where 2020 brought us to. I mean, how amazing it is that we can actually do this. Yeah, no. We're sitting in Bali right now. We're, we got GoPros, we got a camera, we got a laptop, we got the question, we got everything ready, two microphones, a couple of beers. Yeah. We're th we, we are sitting here right now being pure digital nomads at the very right definition. Yes. And we're doing this and sending out into the world. Giving value, giving value, talking about the process, documenting the process. I, sh I should be making a course on podcasting at some point. Look, that's that's what I'm, uh, 100%. Yeah. Document, like, for example, Wearwise is the brand of Annika, the, yeah. the, the bikini brand, mm -hmm. okay? And 12 months ago, when we, August, uh, al almost 12 months ago, um, August 2019, we were in Bali visiting our manufacturer for the very first time. What did we do? Took the camera. Took the camera, documented everything for one year straight. We got 50, 60, 70 videos ready to be released in a course. Once the brand is there where we want it to be, a million dollar brand, yeah. uh, because that's always the, 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 the line we want to cross, always hitting a million, is once we got that ready, what am I going to do? Release a course on... There we are. Yeah. On showing others The good, the bad, and the ugly. To. The whole process from start to finish. Exactly. From the idea to the finished product. Yeah. If you guys take away one thing from this podcast, I can tell you, document and the process will change your life from zero to here. Yeah, that's interesting because that was my next question. It was like, it would have been, what advice would you give? What one piece of advice would you give for people who are trying to monetize but they're unsure on, on how to monetize? But everyone has value here. Every single person, as you say, if you've got a hundred followers, and everybody's got a story, a million followers, everyone has value. Someone wants to get to the point where you are at, whether you've got, as I say, a hundred followers. Yeah. Or, Everyone's got value. So if you can document that with it, you say it's an ebook or an online course or whatever, someone's willing to buy it. That's for sure. Whether it's for a few dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever. I like yeah. I can tell you if, if there's one lesson I can teach and one lesson I've learned mm -hmm. is documenting processes. Yeah. Um, and documenting doesn't mean the perfect light, the perfect hair, uh, the perfect shirt, the perfect whatever. Yeah. Documenting means purely getting the camera out, showing the good and the bad. Yeah. Um, showing especially the negative 
because you know what? If you release something, um, you're releasing it out of the purpose of not letting people run into the same mistake you did. Exactly. We did mistakes on our journey. Yeah. We did a lot of mistakes on our journey. We invested money into things where we shouldn't have invested in. We um, went down roads where we shouldn't have gone to. Um, we did travels or collaborations where from the beginning, we should have clearly said, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. We've been there. And um, so I truly think documenting the good and the bad, especially the bad. Because you know, spotlight, everybody is good. Of course. In spotlight on the stages and the podcast, everybody's good. Of course. That's easy. Yeah. But what if all this goes off now? The light goes down, everything shit hits the fan. Who are you then? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the question. And that's the bet people need to see. That's, that's, the, that's when you go, like put everything aside and you go deep yeah. and you're like, what is it? Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. Totally agree. Now, um, you and many others have a shared love for Mr. Gary Vee. And I can see your face light up already talking about the guy. Um, so when it comes to an inspiration, uh, in terms of business, he's obviously absolutely killing it online and in business right now. He's probably one of the most famous and sought after business minds in the entire world, be it online or, or whatever. Um, and you recently managed to spend some time with him. So how did you make that happen? Investing. 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 Investing in yourself. And uh, I just wanted to say, not investing in him, yeah. investing in ourselves. Uh -huh. So um, before I answer that question, I think it's time for another bin tank. Another bin tank. Just, just saying. Uh, because I'm, I'm running. Yeah, I'm running dry. I, I just yeah. saw, I, your throat is going like it's scratchy, like it's, you know? it's, it's getting uh, scratchy. Yeah, it, needs some, it needs to be well oiled. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, my man. Thank you, you. lad. Uh, we're, we're on a bit. Um, we're over an hour already. It's uh, amazing how time flies eh, when uh, you're having fun talking about things like this. Uh, cheers, my man. Prost. Cheers, prost. Yachida. Yachida. <laughs> so I. Um, so when you met Mr. Gary V, I mean, when I seen that, I thought, wow, how the hell did you make that happen? I mean, I'm not shocked. Whenever you do anything, I'm never shocked. I'm just intrigued. So I'm like, how the hell did you manage to get into the presence of this man and, and spend a lot of time with him? Three days. Three days, eh? Three days, full, full on three days with, uh, with Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, probably one of the most pulsating and um, innovative um, entrepreneurs and social media experts on the planet, yeah. I would say. Um, roughly 7 million followers on Instagram right now, 2.6, 2.7 million subscribers on YouTube. Um, and he's a very controversial entrepreneur, I would say. Um, why? Because he does things different. Yeah. He just does things completely different. He has a mission in his life and his mission, besides a family and kids and business, is to buy the Jets. The New York Jets. That's his mission. Roughly price at the moment $4.2 billion. To buy a company or a sports club like the Jets um, determines a lot of sacrifice, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of knowledge, um, and closing billion dollar deals is nothing you just do overnight. Of course. You know? um, I recorded a video with Gary together and I asked him, hey, uh, one advice you want to give to young people? And he said, slow it the fuck down. Now, a lot of people didn't understand this. I put it up on an Instagram and a lot of people were like, so the hustler himself tells you to slow down, tells me to slow down. That's a contradiction. I was sure there's a like, contradiction. There. Where the hell did that come from right yeah. now? No, I was expecting like hustle 24 yeah, seven, go, go all in, go yeah. quicker, go faster. Yeah. He said, slow the fuck down. And I thought about his message. Um, it was a minute video and I thought about it and now I understand what it means. Slow it the fuck down means nothing else than actually understanding that the process is what you need to love. Yeah. Slow it the fuck down means not founding something today, founding your podcast today and being in the iTunes trending charts, podcast charts tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. That doesn't happen. It's a process and it's work. Um, it's a lot of work. Any business requires work. Regardless of you do, if you do a bikini brand, if you come up with a new beer brand, if you come up with whatever, you, you come up with electronics, you, 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 I don't know, do the first sustainable wooden watch or whatever. Any business requires a lot of time, yeah. a lot of money, a lot of investment. And I'm not talking investment money, I'm talking investment time-wise. 
blood, sweat, tears, the downs, the downs, the downs, the downs, and then the ups. Yeah. So that was one of the most valuable lessons um, I've learned. How did we get to Gary? Very simple, invested. Uh, we received an email that we were um, able to apply for a program such as called um, the Gary V Experience. And the great thing about this is, and that's a big shout out to Michael Lane, uh, who's the CEO of Success Resources uh, in Australia. And um, Michael basically came up to us and said, like, look guys, this would be something great for you. We applied, and here's just one thing, a valuable lesson I wanna give you. We were always willing to invest into our business, but I've never invested on six figures high. I've never. I've never transferred the six figures. Mm -hmm. When we had to apply on that page, there was the last question before apply. It says, how much money are you willing to invest into the Gary Vee experience? The entry number was $100,000. The entry number. And I was like, it's an expensive like, ticket. Like Ralph called me and said like, bro, if we put 100K in there, like 100, 250 and 500 or something, I'm not yeah, really yeah. sure. And I was like, if we put that in there and they call us and they say, okay, you're in, we have to pay 100K. <laughs> We're like, damn, what are we yeah. gonna do? Yeah. <clears throat> we applied. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we sent out the application. We got a call uh, from Success Resources and they said, okay guys, you uh, tell us more about your brand, tell us where you wanna go, tell us what you wanna do. And um, we got the golden call and then we basically invested into it. Right. Um, it wasn't quite six figures, but um, it was a lot of money. And uh, we flew into New York, spent three days. And now the great thing about it is, we didn't spend three days with Gary only. We spent three days with Gary V experience. What does that mean? We spent time with the VP. We spent time with the formal president of the Green Bay Packers. We spent time at Jay-Z's club. We spent time uh, in the back door, not in the club, but yeah. in the back doors yeah. where the deals happen. Yeah. We, were, we were spending time with Jess Itzler. One of the, he sold his company to Warren Buffett for $5 billion. Um, he sold another business, uh, another business for one point something billion dollars, uh, a coconut business, where he was importing coconuts, uh, coconut water uh, to the States. Um, so much more. So think about this. We invested money to open up a whole different world of network. There were 20 people and we were the smallest by far. Um, there were people in the room making multi hundreds of millions of dollars a year hundreds of millions of dollars a year. We were in the same room, exchanging knowledge. Yeah. Uh, they're on my WhatsApp. I can call them at any time. If I go to Australia, trust me, I've got a home. Yeah. Everything's good. Yeah. Um, CEO Michael Lane from Success Resources, he revealed straight up the strategy, how you really wanna, wanna get in front of people, how to really, really give more value, what are the strategies in 2020. And um, what happened then was, we flew home from New York straight up to, not home, but we flew to Costa Rica because we got our team gathered there and they were waiting for us to share the information. Mm -hmm. It took us two days of straight 48 hours of work and we implemented all the strategies and ever since that brought us to the most successful quarter in 2020 already, already making way above a lot of money. So that's probably one of the best examples you could give of investing in yourself. Because best. you have now, that is a priceless network of people with a priceless amount of knowledge, which you, you, you can't put a price on because you paid money not, for it, but it's not. it'll pay itself, you, you basically, you'll pay, you'll pay, it'll get paid back to you in the long term because you've, you've now got access to people and resources and information that is, that is priceless, basically, it is priceless. You cannot put a price on yeah. it. You cannot. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Um, how much money would it be worth for you um, to find a strategy where you can live your life on your terms and your conditions yeah. for you, your future mm -hmm. wife to be, <laughs> and uh, no pressure. Um, <laughs> we are engaged, so it's yeah. right. It's going to happen at some just point. Just joking. <laughs> um, um, uh, saying like in terms of how, what price tag would you put on a, on a life and freedom? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there even a price tag? Yeah. I don't think so. No. So money is money. If you understand, if you, change your, if you change your attitude towards money, 
things will go different. Yeah. You know what I mean? I heard the good Tony Robbins quote. He said that money is a shapeshifter. It becomes whatever you place on it. It can become whatever you want. It can be, become the end goal. It, be, it can become the process. Yeah. So it's whatever, like, to, money to you will be different to what money is to me. And yeah. it will be different to the guy that cleans the pool or yeah. the guy that owns the business up there. I agree. Money is a shapeshifter. And that really resonated with me because if you put the right value in money and you have a good relationship with money, and a healthy relationship with money, then you use it in the right, in the correct way, you know? See, I think, I think money is great uh, because, let's be honest, uh, and let's talk real. 95 of all questions, 95% of all questions in the world can be answered by money. Yeah. How can you stop hunger? Money. Money. How can you distribute um, clean water? To, uh, to, 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 to people who don't have access to clean water, yeah. money. How do you build schools? Money. Um, a lot of health. A lot of people would now say, oh, you cannot buy health with money. I got you on that one. I'm like, wait a minute. That's true. You cannot go to the supermarket and be like, hey, $100, give me a healthy life. Yeah. You can go to better doctors. You can go to better clinics. Yeah. If you have money, you got private doctors. You got all these things happening. So, having the right attitude with money, yeah, totally agree. Towards money is yeah. something very it's important, very important lesson yeah. I learned. Now, would you see? Um, so you obviously got the chance to meet Mr. Gary Vee. Would you see he is one of your biggest inspirations, or have you got any other any other people that are your big inspirations? Not the biggest inspiration. No. Um, and I'll <laughs> tell you why. Um, I don't know if I wanted his life. Yeah. Um, but with his purpose and what he wants in life, it is exactly the right thing what he's doing, right? Um, I think there are certain inspirations. Um, when it comes to business, yes, Gary is a huge inspiration, huge inspiration. When it comes to content distribution, mm -hmm. he spreads out content not like no one else, yeah. like no one else. Hundreds of pieces of content daily, every single day. I mean, not mentioning he has 175 people working 24 seven for him. Just FYI, and having 1,900 employees across four continents and six offices. Yeah. Um, different game, no question. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what is the biggest inspiration? Uh, like, what are the biggest inspirations? Um, the great Tony, Tony Robbins. Mr. Is, Tony is, Robbins. Is, oh, yeah, is, I think he's. A I've seen him yeah. three or four times. Uh, three or four times yet. Um, true inspiration when it comes uh, to clarity, when it comes to spirituality. Um, when it comes to love, yeah, great, yeah, like really, and he's been through a lot as well, Mr. Tony Robbins. He's he's had a hard life in the early early days. Yeah, um, yeah. The, yeah. What the, the like he's been an inspiration of what giving back means. Yeah, because um, yeah, like, he was that he feeds a billion people. That's right, I that's right. Massive fan of his podcast he as well. He feeds a billion people. Yeah, think about that. Yeah, we're not talking. That's a seventh. Of yeah. the world's population, yeah. he feeds. Think about it. Um, like what a legacy that he is. He is. He is. Yeah. He is. Tony is. Um, uh, and now again, because I'm fascinated by numbers, um, he is a motivational speaker. That's where he started off with, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, doing his things and doing his seminars and everything. He's the only public speaker um, in the world who makes a billion dollar revenue a year. Yeah. By speaking. Well, if anyone's not familiar with Tony Robbins, which I'm sure most people are. Watch his Netflix documentary. Oh, um, what what the uh, um, what's it, what, I can't remember the name of it, but if you search Tony Robbins on, on yeah, Netflix, yeah, you'll find it on Netflix straight up. Is, yeah. That was for me when I watched that. That was an absolute game changer. Don't be my guru. I something like yeah, I something I something sure. to be guru, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just him speaking. At his, I think it's a five or seven day event every year. Yep. I think it was in America. Cheapest ticket five thousand dollars. Five thousand um, dollars. But, but but it's like here again. What is it worth? Pocket change. For you, exact. It's like, it's like nothing. Lint. It's, it's lint in your pocket. But uh, when you see the transformations. 100%. Of people from day zero to the final day, uh, it's just incredible. The guy's just, he's superhuman when it comes to inspiration. Yeah. Um, a complete anomaly. 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 Um, so I'd recommend 100% for anyone who watched that. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, no, as well, I mean, we've not, we've not really spoke about it, and, um, but you, you obviously sell presets. Yep. You sell online courses, you run retreats in Thailand, which are very successful as well. Yep. You guys have got your fingers in a few pies. Um, but you're also about to launch your first ever physical product. You've spoke about it a couple of times. Um, 
Wearwise, which is very exciting. So do you want to tell us a wee bit more about that? Wearwise is a, the idea of Wearwise actually happened because of our followers. Mm -hmm. So um, as you tend to grow on social media, brands will approach you and they will be like, hey, don't you want to wear my bikini? Just wear it on your pictures and just tag us. And um, Annika actually got a message from, uh, from a bikini brand, not to mention which one, but um, they said, hey, can we send you some uh, bikinis? You can wear them. And they didn't send one, they sent like 20 or something. Yeah. Really crazy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sent them over and she really resonated with the message and the bikinis. And um, a lot of people were asking, hey, where's this bikini from? Hey, where's that bikini from? And what we don't do on Love Life Passport, we don't advertise. Yeah. So we don't go on, we don't go on, our, on our Instagram and be like, oh, Bintang is the best beer of the world. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, because I think, you know what? We, we promote things we uh, really love. Like, I'll give you an example, everyone. This brand here, without mentioning it, but you can read it. Right. Um, oh, what about those on Spotify and iTunes? They can't read it. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, it's true, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's called Baller. Baller, okay. right. that's yeah. fine. Baller is a, um, is a Dutch brand and was founded by a footballer. And um, they basically, um, they reached out to us and said, hey, can you please promote our brand? We're going to send you some, some T-shirts and some jumpers or whatever. Choose whatever you want. Um, we want three posts. We want this. We want that. And we said, hey, um, we're sorry, but that's not the way we work. Um, Love Life Passport is more a travel channel, more inspiration, motivational channel. Um, but what you, what we can do if you want is we can wear it. If I like it and resonate with the message, yeah. I'm a former footballer, yeah. right? I love football. It's like, like besides of traveling, football is, passion. that's my passion. Your religion. And I 100% resonated with what they said. And I said, look, I'm going to wear it if I like it but I'm not gonna post that you guys are the greatest. Yeah. And they accepted it. And every single month they send us a big parcel of new stuff and everything and I really enjoy it. And here you are wearing it today. And here we are, I'm wearing it today, yeah. right? Um, but Wearwise became, um, or not became, but is becoming um, an international brand um, by the idea of yes, wearing a bikini and looking good because a lot of women um, have issues in finding good looking bikinis, especially women with, uh, um, Annika explained this to me once. She said like women's bodies Body shapes, are, yeah. are, are just weird. Yeah. That's what she said. They're just not, they're just not, how do you say, proportionate, yeah. right? Um, a, a little bit wider on the top, a little bit less on, uh, on the bottom or the other way around, it doesn't matter, right? Not everybody has the same, the same proportion body. And then she created the swimwear um, with a sustainable aspect where she said, how can we help to save the world? And she was like, why not finding plastic in the ocean and actually um, recycling it and making sure that we can put that into bikinis? And that's where the idea was born. We found a company um, and that company helped us to set everything up. Mm -hmm. And we basically go out in the ocean, collect plastic, collect uh, fishing nets, and um, take that and um, put it into bikinis. So sustainable. That's it's a hundred percent sustainable. One hundred percent sustainable. And I'm proudly, and that's the great thing about it. Um, I'm proudly, I proudly can say that's a hundred percent sustainable brand. Why? Because even the logistics, everything is uh, um, on sustainable, like on, on go green. Yeah. So uh, we work uh, with several partners. And uh, they basically make sure that uh, their emissions are being lowered and stuff like that. So we are really protective on that. And the brand is launching on the 5th of April. It's a total different world launching a physical product. I was product. going to say that. Is it, is it a different challenge from different all the other projects, all the oh. other things that you've been involved in? Think it's about a physical it. product. Putting a podcast up. Yeah. Right? Uh, not uh, um, devaluing it. Yeah, yeah. But putting a podcast, we record it here, put it up on a platform, let's see how it performs. Yeah. Physical products. Um, same with Love Life Passport. If we put up an ebook, okay, we we'll put it up in the store, create a page, here we go, download it. Yeah, because everything you've done so far is basically it's digital. Digital. Yeah. digital. And now we have a physical product, means uh, let's look into regulations. Mm -hmm. um, what can we import? What can we not import? Yep. Taxes, um, uh, storage, distribution, returns. support, yeah. returns, um, investments in general. Um, who's going to do all this? E-commerce, Shopify, e like I just cross build, arms and Build legs. the shop, yeah. uh, track the numbers, yeah. uh, all these things. You need people for this mm -hmm. and you need money for this. Yeah. This is this is a high, 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 very high, close to six 
five figure but close to six figure investment. Yeah. You do. Before you see any return. Before you see anything. It's the polar opposite of a, a digital product, really. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 100% agree. Are you excited, nervous, apprehensive, anxious? What, how are you feeling about the, the Zero. 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 Excited. I'm 100% excited. Yeah. And I know it's going to be a success. Yeah. 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 It's exciting, man. I'm excited for it. Obviously, yeah. um, Annika, Ivana, see the the designs and Ivana is one of the harshest crit critics that I know when it comes to fashion and she was absolutely buzzing when she's seen the designs and you know what I love about Annika Annika when she does something she does it right yeah she just does yeah. it right yeah it's Ridiculous. so so powerful mm -hmm. so when when did you say it was going to launch 5th of April of 2020 April. at 10 a.m. German time well, where the will you be will at that point when it we're going to be in Germany. In Germany. We, well, let's see if yeah. uh, travels continues, but uh, we're going to be in Germany. Uh, if nothing else happens, um, we're going to be supporting the distribution side, yeah. which is going to be uh, taking care of Annika's mom. That would be really nice as well, because if you're back in Germany, you're going to be around family, and it's, especially for Annika, because yep. this, is her, this, is gen this is her baby. Annika is more a family person. Yep, so. Annika is way more family, uh, family, uh, like family oriented than me. Um, but her mom is helping us with the, with the distribution just because of space and everything. She has yeah. a big house where we can store everything. And um, that's really, really great. Um, but being there and, and again, understanding the process. Yeah. I want to see how long does it take to actually get the order in and then put the bikini in a bag, um, in the sustainable bag, put you it in the sustainable that packaging. As you go. Exactly. Yeah. Everything is being documented. Yeah. How is it to call DHL and be like, hey, DHL, look, we have to pick up this, we have to pick up that? How does all this well, I've work? Seen, I've seen you here, you're, working, you're, you're, you're calling this person, you're calling that person, you're calling customers in excise, you're calling distributors. Yeah. You're call, you know, it's, it's a full on process. And these are the things, you know, you'll never see the, the end product. Yeah. It's the bits behind the scenes, the, the, the cogs and, and the wheel I agree. that makes this happen. And that's the bit that's interesting. That's I agree. the bit that you document and sell, which I find fascinating. Is, and it's one of the biggest things that you definitely taught us was the, the document and the process. And absolutely, when this thing is a success, as soon as you put all these videos together yep. and, and package it into a, you know, an online course. I wish I could have had, and I would have immediately bought into yeah. it, uh, regardless of exactly. the number. If somebody would have given me the direct steps on how to create an e-commerce business, Name it. Name the price yeah. tag I'm going to pay. You're selling a resource that you wish you had. Exactly. I am. Yeah, it's Agreed. exciting, man. I'm really excited for this whole process. I'm glad that I've been here. To You'll get access. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm glad I've been part of it just to see see behind the scenes. It's exciting, man. Now, you guys, you're, you're never, ever offline. Every single day, you can bank on you guys having so many Instagram stories up. You've got new Instagram TV videos going up, YouTube videos, pictures. Does that ever become like exhausting or put a strain? Uh, on you guys because you are very very consistent with the messages you deliver and the volume of the message that you deliver consistency is key yeah consistency is something uh, which is mandatory for success mm -hmm. um, and consistency does not necessarily need to be daily mm -hmm. see um, consistency for your podcast is one a week yeah that's consistency one a week that's 52 episodes a year yeah that's consistency um, Putting up a daily uh, Instagram post is consistency. Putting up an Instagram post every three days is still consistency. Whatever you define as consistent is consistent. And that's where a lot of people don't understand Instagram. Instagram wants you to be consistent. It doesn't mean post, 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 post. It means be consistent. Yeah. Don't post every three days, every five days, every seven days, every 10 days. Post every two days every three days but then post every three days yeah, yeah. Stick very important thing yeah. um, that's where the algorithm will reward you big time yeah. um, to answer the question straight up yes yes it becomes exhausting I mean we know how difficult it can be when you, you're consistently trying to deliver value especially you've got behind this especially for you guys trying to build a brand from scratch yeah whilst dealing with multiple other projects yeah to still have the time I mean, it looks easy. Just oh, they put another story up. It takes time to think about the, the message you're trying See, to deliver. See, in our stories, record yeah. it, and you you guys put up a lot of stories, and that that takes that can take half an hour at a time just to put up one story. Yeah, 30, 30 to fifty stories a day we have. Thirty to fifty stories a day. One Instagram TV a day. Yeah. Every single day. Every single day, and one Instagram post a day, um, and that's besides of commenting, yeah. engaging, and between a hundred and two hundred DMs a day. Mm -hmm. And we don't let anyone rule our Instagram. We do it. Yeah. Like 100% we do it. We got a team, of course, people editing our IGTVs and stuff like that. No question. 
Um, but um, the 30 to 50 stories a day we put up um, are there because we, the message we share um, we think is very important. So um, it gets exhausting, yes, sometimes. Is it because you enjoy it so much? But I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I really enjoy putting so up stories. So that's the key. 100%. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, don't do things that you don't enjoy. No. Do things that even, even in the evening, when I'm really exhausted of the day, we had a, I don't know, we did a hike, we did a lot of shootings, we recorded stuff and everything, and I lie in bed, I'm like, oh, fuck, it's so, I'm, I'm really tired. Yeah. And then I think like, oh, fuck, I got one story still to upload. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because that message of that story was so important. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Consistency is key, guys. Yeah, I, I it's totally so important. I totally agree with that. Um, in terms of mental health, because this is something I like to touch on in this podcast. Good points. Good um, points. Especially in this industry and what we do. I mean, mate, everyone suffers from mental health. Whether they like it or not, in some way, shape or form, in their life, you will suffer from mental health. So in terms of mental health, how, how do you and Annika manage that? Because... The, uh, that it, we're all human yep. there will be points of burnout whether you enjoy it or not how do you guys deal with your mental health yeah um, I, I really have to say at this moment where we are right now for the first time in the past five actually the second time um, I had this once in April 2018 uh, when I was going maniac uh, for a sales target I wanted to hit with, with, with the network marketing company I'm part of. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really, really crushing and running and doing and, and just giving it all. Um, but what happened was that after, I think, 42 hours or something of straight working, like really no sleep and just constant stress, I just collapsed. Yeah. Um, but that showed me where I don't want to be. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's where I understood that I'd never want to go back to that point. That's where I knew, okay, this is the borders of how much I can do. Now, at this time where we are right now, we have a team of people as, uh, assisting us and we're not doing everything ourselves. We, of course, we're like the commando uh, central hub with a headquarter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you yeah. want to when you look at that. So we take all the decisions at the end of the day, no question. But um, mental health starts with how you start your day. Um, I truly believe in routines. I truly believe in, um, in focusing on positivity and not on negativity. If you genuinely run for negativity, it's an issue. If you are always the person who runs after the gossip, it's not good. It's just purely not good if you run for the gossip all the time. Um, if anybody approaches me with negative shit, don't talk to me. Yeah. Like, really, don't talk to me about it. Um, obviously, at the moment, with all the virus going on, it's something where you are being approached by negativity every single day. Um, regardless if you go on social media or anywhere else, you're approached from it. I think the best thing to do is to focus on what you can do good and what you can change and what you cannot change. Yeah. If there's something you cannot change, don't freaking put any thinking towards it. Um, focus on where you want to be in life. Focus on what, uh, on, on, on the right values for yourself. Where do you see yourself? What is the right value for you? And um, I think that's, that's one of the most important things. Um, what do we do? We have routines. Um, and I have to say, Annika's way better at it. I'm really weak at it. Okay. Um, because I always see the job needs to be done. Annika says, no, my routine needs to be done first. So she wakes up every single morning, very early. 7.30, 7 a.m. in the morning, she does her yoga meditation. Um, I'm not too much into yoga. I like it, but I'm not too much into it. I do meditation um, pretty a lot, actually, to be honest. Um, deep meditations, yeah. like really deep meditation was blow your mind away. Um, very spiritual, mm-hmm. a, lot of th- a lot of things. But the focus for 2020 after our wedding is going to be basically finding ourselves a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do this year. We're going to probably move to Bali. Uh, for three for three months of the year and um, just be here yeah. and, 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 and suck Indulge. everything up you know Indulge what I mean in everything here exactly the beach. exactly the you know but and enjoy it of we have the beach in Dubai as well no of question course, yeah. but we don't we don't use it yeah right so uh, we're looking into yeah doing a lot of yoga doing a lot of spiritual stuff breath work um, stuff. exactly yeah, coaches yeah there's 
there's a lot of experts here in different fields. Exactly. So, yeah. And a lot of experts when it comes to mental health. Yeah. And uh, I think it's the right environment here in Bali. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Like, and, and I really have to say to everyone who's listening to this, if you have issues with mental health and whatsoever, um, you have to get your, your head straight first. Yeah. Like regardless, if you want to go to a doctor, if you want to go somewhere or talk to someone or whatsoever, find help. Yeah. If you're mentally not prepared, um, really go out there and find someone who helps you with this. Because if, you're, if your brain is occupied by, by whatever situation, it may be something from their childhood, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if, if you run through a bad relationship, if you had issues with your parents, if whatsoever, this is holding you back yeah. from becoming a better version of yourself. So go out there, make sure you find someone who uh, gives you the inspiration. Uh, maybe this podcast even helps you to, to really get the last like, tip to find someone, Google or whatsoever, to move forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because mental health is, nobody can take away your health. No yeah. business, no money, no dollar, no follower, yeah. no like, no comment. Nothing can take away your mental health. Yeah, man, I completely agree with the routine aspect. I mean, I know when I've had some struggles or I've, I've gone through some darker times, when I evaluate my life at that point or my day-to-day -day stuff, there's a complete lack of routine. There's a complete lack of physical activity or self-care. Yeah. You know, and I think that's so important, man, the, the message you convey about self-care is so important, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, yep. whether it's breath work or whatever. Find the right yeah, thing for yourself. Find something. But like a lot of try it. See, a lot of people yeah. go to the gym, for example, yeah. right? And a lot of people, like I see people going to the gym and they start putting up these big weights and everything and they, it's like their thing. They love it. They go like all in and they yeah. just bush it, right? Um, me, for example, if I go to the gym, I get, I get, I get, I get, I, it's the most negative thing I could think about, yeah. to be really honest. Um, it's not for everyone. Because it's not for me. Yeah. But you know what? Waking up in the morning, hearing the birds, having a tea um, or an espresso or whatever, having a good breakfast. Yeah. Um, honestly, awesome. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Doing a yoga, uh, a quick yoga session or, or a breathing session or a meditation session. Yeah, we've got so much Love access it. to it. Love it. You just need to find yourself on YouTube. Exactly. There's so many resources online. Everything is out there. A lot of people get a bit of social anxiety about maybe going to a gym or going to a yoga class because they feel, oh, I, I don't know about yep. that. You know, they want to get into self care, but they don't know where to start. There's so many free resources yep. online. Just find yourself on YouTube and just, I say, like throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Just try different things. Try yep. breath work. Whether you're yep. dubious, whether you, you know, if you believe in it or not just try different things and see what sticks because it's amazing what might stick. Yeah. Like I never thought I'd enjoy yoga. I enjoy yoga when I, when I do it. I never really used to enjoy the gym, but now I enjoy the gym. Like, just, you just need to try these different things to see Agree. what sticks. And self-care is so important. At the end of the day, you can chase money, you can chase success, you can chase the lifestyle, but if it's not, if it's not all right upstairs, then yep. none of these things will matter, yep. man. Because even the most successful people in the world suffer from mental health issues, you know? So it's, it's, it's the most crucial element or ingredient, I think. You can, you, you, look, our human bodies are machines, mm -hmm. like purely machines. Yeah. Um, our human bodies can, can really take a lot, yeah. a lot. It can take a lot of hits, it can, like a, a ticket, it can take a lot of downs. It's really, it, it can take it. Yeah. But your body at some time, like mother nature, it will come back It'll and hit you back. hard. Yeah. If you don't start respecting your body absolutely and that is something super important it's a comparison um, actually comparing it to, to nature because eventually it does fight back if you can if you continue to abuse your body it will fight back at some point 100% whether it's and, physical and or mental yeah. both yeah good man I really appreciate that insight to mental health as I say it's, it's the, the niche that, it's a no niche podcast but it's something I always want to continually come back yep. to so I was really interested to know your thoughts on that because I don't think it's something that we've ever actually discussed so good advice man I appreciate that um, now, you guys are fast and furious when it comes to travel as well. So how many countries have you been to together and, and what time frame? Because I know you guys have been through a lot of countries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did, um, and this probably sounds super stressful for a lot of people, but we did 85 countries in just about two years. 85 countries in two years. Did you ever get the bug to just go, you know what, we're, we're close to completing it, so <laughs> we'll just continue? But I'm, I'm guessing you will try and continue, complete it at some point, go um, to every country in the world. It's, it's, I mean, there's 195 countries right. and in total 200 uh, with the territories in the world, uh, which are not seen as countries, yeah, yeah. 200 and, I mean, I see the most countries, but uh, it's 212 countries in the world. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, might be less. 
um, I fell in love with meeting people. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with understanding religions. Yeah. I understand in, uh, I, I, I fell in love with understanding cultures, different spices, I different did, yeah. thinkings, different, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like man. 85 countries has taught us so many lessons, so many lessons. Um, ah, multiple man i yeah. can tell you stories you i can imagine yeah, i can imagine i know what we've learned in our short space of time with travel and we've i think we've been a fraction of what you guys have been together uh, yeah, but how many countries have you done i think i've done i think it's close to 40 i think i've done about 40 countries yeah, think know, but, about yeah, that. yeah, yeah but i'm talking about together with havana i don't know how many, how many we've done maybe still, maybe 20 but there like we are that. still 20 countries. it's still 20 i know it's still 20 and i know how much we experienced exactly. how much we learned so like what you have what you have learned even on 20 yeah. uh, on, on, on uh, regardless cultures. regardless of how many yeah. nobody has to chase the number yeah yeah right of course it's 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 more or less about the fact go and yes. explore, yep. go and, and meet, yep. go indulge, go the really cultures, experience the religions, it. Oh my God. The history, the aye, oh absolutely my God. everything, man. You learn a lot. They say it's cliche, man, but you learn a lot about travel, but when you travel, but it's absolutely true. My perception was so many things changed through that two years of travel, mental health, um, cultures, religions, yeah. um, Polit political, like every, all my perceptions, all my beliefs. So many things, like some way, shape, for example, one one country I'd love to travel to is Syria. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, um, mine's uh, is North Korea. Yeah, see, uh, and I want to do Korea. North Korea as well. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be. I, I want to see it. It's it's not that I'm. It's not that I'm. I I, I don't even have to do a story about it. Yeah. I don't even have to do a vlog. I don't even have to talk about it. Yeah. I want to see it. Not to document it, just to. Experience I want to be there. Yeah. I want to see what. What is the world saying? Like the world is talking about North Korea or Syria, or yeah. maybe it's not the two best countries to put them into one uh, phrase right now. But without, regardless, and this is not political or whatever, um, I just want to see. I just want to understand. I just want to see that when this whole refugee thing happened, right? Um, I mean, it's still happening on a daily basis, unfortunately, uh, which is not great. Um, but a lot of people in the past one, two years, um, especially from the Middle East and part, tried to make their way through Turkey and Greece yeah. to Europe, right? <laughs> so, you know what my th first thought was, but it, I, I was unfortunately not able to do it because of other, other commitments. Um, I wanted to go to the, to the border where the refugees come on land uh, when they come with the boats. I wanted to be there. I want to see it. I wanted to see it. I wanted to help. I wanted to be there. I wanted to experience this whole thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was not able to go. Um, but I know other people um, in in like a couple of uh, yeah people I know from from other friends as well. Um, they for, they are like um, um, documentary filmers. Okay, yeah. And uh, they were in Syria for like three months straight, and they documented a lot of people. Like um, the best friend of my dad, his son left overnight to Syria to fight um, for, um, for, the, uh, um, for the UK uh, army. And um, dude, it, 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 you cannot put it in words. Yeah. But besides of all the bad, I really have to say he was, more t he was always more talking about the good. Yeah. Um, what was happening, how the people were helping, the These religion. These are the things you won't see in exactly. the media. Because, I mean, CNN, what do they want? They want to put up like people being shot. Yeah, clickbait. They want to, they want to, they want to get they want to get all the clickbaits up yeah, there, yeah. and they want to be make sure like everybody reads this bad article of who course. got shot. Yeah. But then at the same time, there's nice things happening as well. Yeah. There's nice things happening. And it's important as well. that they are documented as well, but unfortunately they're not documented as well as yeah. the bad things. But yeah. with the emergence of social media and bloggers and bloggers, there is more access to the the stuff that you don't normally see in the media, Agreed. which is fantastic, man, and which I hope there is more freedom of press and you know. Uh, you, know, you, you get to see the actual nitty gritty behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. The good and the bad, you know. So now nah, that's quite cool, man. Uh, you are very well traveled, absolutely. Um, think about it, 85 countries and you think we're well traveled, well, yeah. but no, think about it. 85 and you think, uh, we think we're yeah. well traveled, yeah. but we got to, we haven't even completed half, half of the, the world. world. No, no. Isn't that crazy? And then yeah. there are other people who haven't even traveled outside of their states. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I respect it, but yeah, I don't understand it. Each to their own, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. 
Um, no, I know we, we, we don't really want to talk about it too much, coronavirus, um, but we can try and put a positive spin on it. Yep. Um, so what are your thoughts on it in terms of like business? Can you see any opportunities to thrive in a difficult situation? You're someone that's ta- always taught me that there's, there's opportunity in difficult situations. So is there anything? Always. Yeah. Can you there's, see there's huge, huge opportunities right now for people uh, in this situation. Um, and you will see there will be um, a lot of a lot of negative going on. A lot of companies are going to die. Yeah. Like they will go out of business. But also at the same time, at the s- there will be companies raising from this. Yes. Right. Uh, there will be there will be companies coming from this negative situation, and they will be multi-billion-dollar companies. So, I think um, let's say for the normal people. In terms of us, yes, like not the big billion dollar brands, what kind of benefit can this be for us? I think the biggest benefit for us can be working from home yeah. and understanding how powerful social media yeah. and online is. Yeah. The time is now to get on the social The time media. is now. If you don't have any digital now. skills, then the time is now. Don't get left behind. 100%. I, I can see, I, can see, I think Ivana said this to me. She said that going forward, the traditional workplace or the traditional office will cease to exist in the future. Because you look at workspaces now, everyone's been sent home to work from home. Yep. So this is, that is going to be the norm. So maybe co-working spaces are going to be the, new, the, the next there we are. thing. You know? Exactly. Like I believe the whole digital nomad thing. Yeah. Um, like, look, the approach we have with Love Life Password with our company is to get people on board. They can be in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. They can be in Pakistan. Yeah. They can be in Germany. They can be in the UK. They can be in the Dominican Republic. They can be Mexico. Yeah. It doesn't matter as long as the job is being done. Of course. And if they feel more healthy and right in that situation, let them be there. Yeah. Totally let agree, man. That's, that's, there is always opportunity. So I was interested to hear the thoughts on that, man. So very interesting. Um, look, as you guys have achieved so much in such a short space of time, you really, really have. Um, how far do you think you can take Love Life Passport and what are your biggest aspirations or goals for the future? I think money money follows passion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if you do good, money will follow. Yeah. So I don't want really to really put a price tag on Love Life Passport yeah. because um, money will follow anyway. Yeah. Okay. My number one uh, goal was to create um, a seven-figure brand out of it. That's what we created. Yeah. Anything above that is great. Um, but now it's more about the focus on how can we actually approach other people, other niches? How can we help them to develop their online business? Yeah. And how can we really make other people financially and geographically 100% free? Yeah. So that's where we are going to take a lot of life password to. Um, and we are venturing into the English markets. Okay. Uh, so that's the focus. Like Focus uh, is still, of course, in the beginning of 2020 uh, to make sure that we sustain in the German market. Uh, we've got a lot of media coverage. We've got a lot of, um, a lot of stuff happening. But also we want to venture into the English markets with a very specific message. Not becoming a travel blogger, uh, but becoming an, an online entrepreneur. Okay. And um, becoming an online entrepreneur may lead to being a travel blogger. That may be your goal. Yeah. But maybe you're going to be a podcaster. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you're going to be a musician. Yeah. Maybe you're going to be whatever. Um, I know people, they sell beats online. Yeah. And they make What's multiple se- yeah, yeah. seven figures a year. Yeah. Right? And yeah. they sell beats online. Yeah. That's their passion. Yeah. Right? I want to make sure that people really understand the value and the strength of online. Super important. Well, I can see you just going from strength to strength, man. And I'm not saying that because you're sat in front of me or because we're friends. But Thank you. I've seen you in action. You've given us advice, which has seen us continue to be here. I, I genuinely, again, I don't say this because you're, you're in front of me, but Ivana and I got to a point where we didn't know how to monetize. And it just took a few conversations with you just to spark an sparking. idea. Sparking. It's, it's sparking the yeah. idea. I mean, we, we, and here we are. Yeah, and we have a lot of people. We have a lot of people asking, yeah. um, hey, is there one piece of advice you can share here and there and there? Of course, we have multiple advi- yeah. uh, advice that we can share. Um, but it's sometimes... You know, you know the great thing about it is, and that's where actually this relationship between you and us, yeah. uh, like taking Ivana and Annika, of course, into this as well. Um, I think because we started to spend time together, and this lesson for everybody who's listening is very simple. Yeah. Um, spend time with people who are where you want to be. Yeah. Very simple. Um, spend time with people who add value to your life. If anybody does not add value to your life, quit it. Put them away. Yeah. Don't even listen to them. Don't follow them. Just, just get out of their life. 
right? Only have people in your life who really are valuable to you. And not valuable in terms of, oh, they can help me build my business. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about a good conversation, of course. I'm talking about a good bintang. You know what I mean? Very good a, bit, a good whiskey. <laughs> a very you know, good whiskey. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I'm talking about that yeah, situation. No, absolutely. My Having totally deeper agreed. talks. Yeah. Then just, just, you know, I had so many friends, like, yeah. not really friends, but friends, and I just met them because we were going out yeah. all the time. That's not friends. That's just people you go That's out with. That's coincidences, yeah. That's coincidences. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 100% agree. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up, man. That's been, uh, it's been a fascinating insight. Um, as I expected, it's been a marathon session. My my timer here says we're over two hours now, uh, and I feel like we've not even scratched the surface. Me and you could chat. Oh, we could we could go on and on. We and could on. chat until the cows <laughs> come home, or you know anything, man. But so I really appreciate, man, uh, every, everything that you've said because I know there is a lot of value in there. I know you give a lot of value on a day to day basis, but it's, a lot of it's in German, a lot is broken up and stuff. So I feel like this is a one. It's the first, I have to Huge say session. that, it's the first ever time yeah. we have talked about this in this intense depth, depth yeah. um, in English. Absolutely. Very first time. Yeah, so um, for, for us, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, and, and, and for us, it's, it's really something we appreciate, you know what I mean? Yeah, Having the platform yep. um, and, and, and being there and providing value. And I mean, we really, really try to provide as much valuable as possible. You do, you do. Um, There's no holes barred with you guys. Everyone's completely transparent. We, and, and that's the thing. See, a lot of people on the social media are not transparent. Yeah. There's, always a, there's always a strategy behind things. There's always, I say things like this because then this happens. Yeah. That's, you will not find that with yeah, us. Man. And, and it's a big advice out there. Yeah. Just be who you are. Yeah. People will love you for who you are yeah. and not for who you maybe want to be. Yeah. That, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Just be who you are. You got your story and, and share that document the process and fell in love fall in love with the process yeah, i think that's that's the wise, most important wise thing. words well let's get together again soon and do this again maybe maybe on a love life passport podcast mm. <laughs> maybe you're yeah. taking something yeah. already yeah. i can see you where we podcast son i can see you where you podcast maybe it's I'll, it's 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 planned yeah um maybe we'll flip the Let's see we'll where. Yep. Let's see when and where <laughs> yep. this is gonna happen. Oh, yeah. That's exciting, man. Good to hear. Good to hear. If you need any pointers, I can document my process and say. There it to we you. are. <laughs> there we are. See, very good. Right, man. I know for a fact that, again that people have been entertained and has some value from this. So if anyone's watching this on YouTube, please drop some comments. Let us know what you think. If you've got any questions or feedback, then please let us know. Very interested to know what people think about this. Uh, I want to thank my lonely patrons, Stephanie, for her continued support. And that's it, my man. That wraps it up. So let's get back to business. I know you're a busy man. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here, man. Cheers, man. Thank you so much. Well, this has been a wee podcast for big subjects and big personalities sprinkled with a wee bit of Scottish humour. See you later.